Good evening, everybody, and welcome to round two of semi-pro football here in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. George Holden, along with my partner, Eric Gausserin, for this 2018 CFC Metro State Roadrunner football season. In case you didn't check out last week, this is round two. As I said, Eric, last week, Metro State loses a tough one, a 15-7 heartbreaker, a game strewn with penalties and missed opportunities. They fall just short last week. A drastic improvement from last year. They fall 0-1. They take on a team tonight, the UCCS Mountain Lions, in their first year of existence. They had a big monster win at home at Mountain Lions Stadium last week. So I have a feeling, Eric, we're going to get uh, a, a taste of that UCCS offense going, out, going against this Metro State defense tonight. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting game, to say the least. Uh, we're looking at a UCCS that so put up 57 on their pro opponent last week. Should be an exciting game to see what happens. Yep, and look at the clouds are forming here in the backdrop of the Rocky Mountains. Might get some rain a little bit later. It's a little bit cool here tonight, but it's a great night for football. And once again, George Holden, Eric Galstrin, we're going to set the stage for you. When we come back, kickoff is straight ahead here from Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. You're watching Steve Weed Media and Metro State Football here at Shea Stadium. Oh, check, check. That's Welcome back here, folks, to Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, getting ready for week two of semi-pro football, the Colorado Football Conference here in Highlands Ranch. The only two, as Eric, you can go into this, there's only two university club football teams that they're playing on this field here tonight, Eric. 
Yeah, yes, they are. Uh, UCCS uh, going against uh, Mastro State. Uh, both of them are uh, university uh, students or alumni that are playing in the game tonight. And uh, both teams are um, just club football teams through the universities, not actually sanctioned through the uh, NCAA. Yep, and ho they're hoping to be. I know that UCCS has talked about that. Their, their actual club program has talked about that quite a bit. Well, the, the club definitely wants to make the uh, football program uh, something uh, that's going to stick around a while. So hopefully they do well, and maybe it'll open up the eyes of the athletic director and the powers that be with uh, UCCS and their uh, upper management. Yep, they got a, a road ahead of them to climb, and it starts one week at a time, one win at a time. They are, they are UCCS, they're in the black and gold. They are 1-0 and on the season after a big win at home last week. They put up 57 points. Metro State 0-1, as we said, 15-7 to loss. That was a tough one here to the Denver Pirates. And that Metro State defense, Eric, was rock solid last week. They gave ample opportunity to that offense. They just couldn't get anything going. Yeah, uh, the credit to the defense for Metro State. They did an absolutely stellar job with as much as uh, the Pirates had the ball last week. Uh, it's amazing that the score wasn't a lot higher. Um, and we'll see uh, what they are able to do this week. Hopefully the, uh, the offense uh, catches fire and we see a great game tonight. Yep, Metro State, the Roadrunners, they will be in the navy blue with red and white trim. They're the home team. Both teams are getting set to do the national anthem here at Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. You're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media, which will be bringing you Metro State football this season. And the referees are down on the field getting things set and organized. We've got a decent amount of uh, fans in the stands, as Eric was saying, we were talking about earlier, for a game that's pretty cold. This is mid-May, and it's pretty, it's pretty chilly here tonight. The fans want to come out and cheer their teams on. Metro State lines up on the east side of the stadium. UCCS will be on the west side of the stadium. So uh, just a recap on the scores for last week. Uh, for those of you that are tuning in with us tonight, uh, Raptors uh, outscored the Eagles 34-6. Uh, to six. Uh, The Sharks uh, put up 28 on the Rage, who only had six. Uh, Nightmare scored 44 against the Flames, 18. The national anthem at Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Once again, George Holden, Eric Galsterin, glad to be bringing you week two of Colorado Football Conference. The UCCS Mountain Lions have traveled north to take on the Roadrunners of Metro State University. Take a quick break. When we come back, kickoff is straight ahead, and we'll have scores and updates from last week. You're watching Steve Weed Media.
Getting set here for kickoff at Highlands Ranch, Colorado, George Holden, Eric Galserin, Metro State hosts UCCS. A couple of quick scores before the kickoff from last week, Eric. Uh, Raptors 34 up on the Eagles 6. Uh, Sharks put up 28 on the Rage, who also only scored 6. Uh, the Nightmare put up 44 on the Flames, who only had 18. Uh, Metro put up uh, 7 and lost, unfortunately, to the Pirates, uh, who had 15. And then UCCS 57 on the Wildfire for 8. We are underway. Metro State kicks off to UCCS, fields it at the 18. Here come the Mat Lions through the middle, breaks a tackle. He's a midfield and knocked down. And UCCS will have good real estate to start with in the very first offensive series of the game. Yeah, that's a great way to start on the 49-yard line. And so UCCS. So UCCS will set up on offense. As Eric said, they put a 57 at home last week in their opener, their debut this season, Metro State gave up 15 to the Denver Pirates. And for all intents and purposes, this should be the Mountain Lion offense against that Roadrunner defense. That could be the big story of tonight's game. Yeah, they, uh, they like I said, they put up 57 on their, uh, on their opener. So it'll be interesting to see what happens tonight up against a very good defense. And there was a penalty on UCCS. They took it back to the 32-yard line. Still pretty good place to start. UCCS, the Mountain Lions, go with twins to the near side, one receiver to the far side, shotgun formation of back to each side. The snap and the handoff. Campbell hands off to his running back, and a good hit by the Roadrunners. Metro State comes flying up from his linebacker position. I want to say that's number 10 for Metro State on the tackle. Apologize, we're still getting updated rosters. Still a lot of trades and the, and the like going on. UCCS, their second play, one, uh, a gain of one, second and nine for the 33. Campbell out of the shotgun, a back to his right, twins to both sides, drops back, good time, fires in the flat, got him, far side, makes a good move over the 40 to the 41-yard line, and he's close to the sticks. And that's Christian Cross, the quarterback, six foot 190 with a quick laser strike to the far side and picks up a lot of what they didn't get on first down. So UCCS, as we said, if you're just joining us, they're in the black uniforms with gold trim and the white helmets. Metro State, navy blue with white and red trim. Ball's at the 41-yard line of UCCS. Opening moments of the first quarter. Glad you could join us at Shea Stadium. Twins receivers to the near side. Trips to the near side this time. One receiver to the far side. And they're going to run speed option to the near side. And he is going to be caught and slammed back at the 25-yard line. The ball carrier for UCCS that time was Dorian McDowell, and he gets lassoed, wrapped up by Metro State tacklers. Good defensive uh, play there. Very good defensive play. Again, that's an outstanding Metro defense that uh, they're playing tonight. And it's, uh, I'm sure, going to be a wake-up call for UCCS. Yep. Like we said, if you look at the Denver Pirates, so we wonder last week of that game we saw with the amount of penalties, you even guessed probably 300 yards, pretty close how many more points they may have scored in that football game. So this defense was able to keep their offense in it. But the, here's the story tonight. Can the Metro State Roadrunner offense get something going? Let's hope. Uh, it would be exciting to see them actually uh, answer uh, the call and show up tonight. They had the one touchdown on an exciting 96-yard pass over the top. Lacavetta took it down the near sideline, took it to the house, and that was about it offensively. Fourth down and 15 at the 27. And that puts the Mount Lions in punt formation. Back to punt is number seven, Xander Offit, six foot 196 for the Mount Lions. He stands at about the 14 yard line, his 14. Two men back deep for Metro State to receive. And one of the deep men is number 21, Muhammad Alasadi, goes by Mo. And he's all the way back to his 35. Off it, gets the kick, high kick, wobbler, and it's fielded, and a great catch! All the way down to the 42-yard line. That was what hurt last week, Eric. Metro State's offense didn't have good field position. They're starting really well here at the 42. Yeah, you can't complain about that. Uh, last week we had three uh, returns that were 
back at the one yard line. Uh, tonight, that is a great way to start the game. Even if it's a fair catch, you're still in great field position. You brought up a good point in the game last week when we had a couple of punt returns where they should have been fielded and the punt returner got away. I'm going to bet you Coach Cobb and his staff got other guys this week for that. Oh, I'm sure they did. You can't do that. But here we go. And it's number one. He went out last week. And he will be back in. That's Jeff Wetner at quarterback. Hands off on the left side. He's got some running room. Cuts up inside. He's at the 49, snip of the 50-yard line. Off tackle to the left side. Good pickup seven on, on first down. And that's number seven, the ball carrier for Metro State. Trying to find him here on the roster. Number seven is Marcel Willis. Good carry by him on the first offensive play for Metro State. Clock under 12 minutes on a brisk, chilly night here, bringing you this game as you're watching live on Steve Weed Media. Good pickup of seven at second and three from the 49. Letner, he'll hand off. They'll go back to Willis again to the same side. He's got a first down and more down the sideline and forced out of bounds near the 30-yard line. What a way for Metro State to start offensively. I tell you, they came to play today. Let's see if they can keep this going. This is exciting. And we talked about it last week, Eric. Maybe Coach Cobb's ears were burning. We were talking about going with the running game, and they have blown open holes on that left side on the bang, bang, the first two plays. They want to get that grounded pound going. Yeah, the best way to wear down a defense is to run the ball and stick it to them. Yep, it's like taking an ax to a tree. Sooner or later, you say timber. Hand off to the right side this time. He spins. He gets a little. He's still on his feet. That's an aggressive run. By the ball carrier for Metro State, he was popped two or three good times but kept his feet and kept going forward. I want to say that's number 15 for Metro State. Yeah, he initially had uh, two yards on that, and the second effort got him to uh, uh, nearly five yards on that play. Great second effort to get the extra yards. Jordan Lacavetta, the man with the long touchdown last week with a physical run, and it's been three straight runs for Metro State. Second and six after a pickup of four. They're already in mountain line territory. They're going to go to the option. Lender's got room, and he fakes the pitch. Lender to the 10, down to the nine-yard line. Inside the nine. It's all been on the ground on this first drive by Metro State. And guess what, Eric? This is a different offense than we saw last week against the Pirates. Oh, it sure is. An absolutely stark difference. So this is a, this is a great way to start the uh, this game against UCCS. UCCS, as we said, they put up 57 points to only seven for Metro State last week. But right now, Metro State up front, the offensive line. They're having fun and getting it done. Lettner goes out of the shotgun. He's got Willis straight behind him. Two receivers to the right, one split far to the wide side. Lettner, he's going to hand off to Willis, and Willis is going to try to get the outside to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Roadrunners, Metro State. First to strike blood. That's absolutely a phenomenal play. Looked like he's going to break in, pushes it out, goes to the house. What a great offensive series by the Metro State Roadrunners. Coach Cobb and his offensive staff, they, kept, they just kept the ball on the ground. And when you can keep the ball on the ground and score touchdowns, Eric, things are going well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can ask for a better way to start off the game with wow. your first possession. And just like that, the Roadrunners – Look to be a different football team than from a week ago against the Denver Pirates. They struggled offensively, and a lot of it was them just not making plays. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of blown opportunities last week, and uh, they seem to be capitalizing and working out the bugs this week. Uh, up seven, zip now. The kick is up, and it is good. And just like that, the Metro State Roadrunners on their first offensive series of this football game, March and Punch the ball right down the throat of that Mountain Lion defense. It's 7-0 Metro State over UCCS. George Holden with Eric Galstrom to take a quick break. When we come back, the Mountain Lions at UCCS will have their second offensive possession of the football game. You're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media. Back to Shea Stadium after that quick break. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having fun. 
SteveWeedMedia.com does a lot more than just football games, infomercials, commercials for your business. Check out his website. This guy can do it all. The man with the plan, Steve Weed of SteveWeedMedia.com. Metro State to kick off at the 35, and it is a riser drops at the 25, and here comes the Mountain Lions. They want to get some good field position here, and they do. They get the ball out to the 39-yard line. That wasn't the problem last time, uh, Eric, having field position. It was that Metro State's defense was on it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they were all, all over them. So let's see what uh, UCCS does differently. Their quarterback, Christian Cross, number two. They've got a kicker, too, UCCS does, who's 6'7". Big guy. Yeah, that is. I think he might even – maybe he played some hoops in the past. I don't know. I'm just going to guess. We'll throw it out there. So here we go. Cross out of the shotgun, a back to his left. Twins receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Cross is going to hand off through the middle, and he's going to be dropped. That's a good tackle by Metro State, the defensive lineman. The ball carrier was Dorian McDowell off to the right, but Metro State, the big guy, one of the big guys of the interior – Makes the tackle for Metro State. Yeah, that was a hard, uh, hard uh, one-yard fought uh, to get that. Uh, Metro State is all over them. The tackle was made by Ryan Rogers, 62. And there's a flag, yellow on green. False start. Laundry. And we'll see what uh, the officials say. It's on UCCS. It's on the mountain lines. They'll it back them up. False start. You know, it, 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 penalties are a big part of the game. And I had a coach say a lot of times, he used to joke around it, talk about turnovers. He used to say, I, I love turnovers. Apple, cherry, all that good stuff. He goes, but not the kind that happened out here. They need to be happening on the other side. You need to be forcing them. And one of the things I remember learning young, too, about turnovers was you don't wait, you create turnovers. You don't absolutely. wait for them. You find a way to create them. Yeah, that's, a, that's absolutely true. You, the turnovers just don't happen. You have to make them. Yep. Punch it out. Do whatever you got to do. UCCS, the handoff again. And he's going to try a great swarming defense by the Roadrunners on the far side at the 36-yard line, and they absolutely slam the door on the ball carrier, McDowell. I tell you, the uh, UCCS hasn't gotten squat on the, on the ground game. They need to open it up and let's start throwing that ball if they're going to get anywhere on Metro State. And I'll tell you what, this quarterback, Christian Cross, he looks shifty and athletic, so look for them to try to get sprints, bootlegs, rollouts. They want to get that running game going, Eric, so they can go back the other way. So here we go. Cross out of the shotgun. Twins receivers to the near side. Twins to the far side. One back with Cross. Third and 11 at the 38. Cross, he's got time, but he's getting bared down on. Hits his man in the flat. First missed tackle. Back a, about a yard over the line of scrimmage. And guess what? It's going to be punting time again. Yeah, hey, <laughs> credit to the Metro State's defense. They are playing outstanding football. Their defense is swarming to the ball. Their, uh, their position players are where they need to be, when they need to be there. They're getting it done on defense. When you play defense, it's all about being agile, mobile, and hostile on the defensive side. Gang tackle, swarm, and wrap up. And so far, this season, this is the first game and tonight, this Metro State defense has been the heart and soul of what they've got so far. Oh, absolutely. They've been playing lights out football. And they're up 7 nothing early in this football game. Snap back, off it with a little bit of sidewinder on the far side. Fielded at the 21, and here comes Metro State. Takes him a step one way, and he's got some blockers. Tries to cut back inside, and he's going to get pushed back. Tried a little bit of fancy footwork in the middle there. Ah, he made it up to the 29-yard line. Yep. And the whistle. Flag at the 26-yard line, so we'll see what that is. It could be a clip on Metro State. We'll see. Block, block in the back, Metro State. And those are ones you hate to see on special teams. Oh, absolutely. Those hurt, especially when you got a decent field position. Well, you had the ball at almost the 30-yard line. Now they got you with your back against the wall. So that, now that offense was impressive, Eric, on that first series. Very impressive. However, you want as much as – as little green as you have, you have to contend with to get in the end zone, but they showed early that, and it was key, the guys that ran the football for the Roadrunners in that first series, it was that offensive line making it happen. Oh, absolutely it was. So here we go. Lettner out of the gun. It's a draw play. To the outside, Willis again. He's got room around the outside, and Willis crashes out. I think he got to the sticks on the far side, and so far, 
Willis is the workhorse for Metro State. Uh, looks like he picked up eight on it. He must have stepped out of bounds uh, just before he got the first down. Second down and two. Ball at the 23. So Metro State yet to throw a pass in this book. They haven't had to after that first series. Oh, no, there's no need to. If, if you can run the ball and run it down their throat and they're not stopping you, why change what's working? Well, the old saying holds true, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. One receiver split to the near side, one to the far side. For Metro, they've got a man on the slot to the near side. Slot, uh, actually, slots on both sides. And Willis stands behind Lettner, the quarterback. Out of the gun. Yep. A reverse to the far side, and he's got a little bit of running room. Breaks a tackle. He's down the sideline. He's down to the 50. Crosses inside to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Metro State. Wow. And I want to say, I think that's Lacavetta. Is that Jordan Lacavetta again? He must have broke six tackles th to get that. What a play call. They had the, the run play going to the right, to the near side. They got the whole defense shifting to that side, and they come back around the other side. He got some running room but had to do some of that on his own down the sideline, and that was just sheer will to break tackles and get into the end zone. Oh, that was a well-timed play. He took his time getting around the back, and then it was lights out. It was off to the races. And I, wanted, I think it was number 15, if I'm not mistaken, Jordan Lacavetta that had that 96-yard pass completion for a touchdown last week, his second of the season. Uh, it looks you. like he uh, stepped out of bounds uh, to somewhere around the three-yard line. If he... Mm. That, that hurts. The snap. Kick is up, and it's good. And just like that, the Roadrunners of Metro State have turned it around in a quick from last week with very little offense to already 14 points in the first quarter with 6.04 left. That line's nothing. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Gelser, and you're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media, Metro State Roadrunner Football, and the Colorado Football Conference. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back from Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch. I can't believe I just said that. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> oh. You guys are doing a great job. You're doing a great Thank job. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Doing I'm doing a mediocre job. He's doing a great job. <laughs> 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 doing a great job. <laughs> great job. <laughs> that was terrible. You should try having people start over instead of doing this. Uh. And here we, folks, welcome back to Shea Stadium. We have got a good football game, a turnaround for Metro State. From last week, point, point production was a problem. They only scored a touchdown last week and lost by eight tonight. They've got two on the boards, on the board already, and they haven't put the ball in the air yet. They're leading 14-0 over the Mountain Lions of UCCS. Getting what? set to kick off. Wow. I mean, that, this, you talk about execution from last week to this week is 100% improvement. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Uh, they are markedly better. Uh, they're they're sticking with their blocks. Uh, the the linemen are doing their job. Uh, the receivers are doing their job. The running back is able to get downfield, and he's got protection. He's able to break a tackle or two, and he's off to off to the house. And the return man on that on that kickoff for UCCS, uh, Alejandro Alanis, 5'10", 160, number 10. He gets it all the way out to the 46-yard line, so good real estate to start once again for UCCS. But Metro State, so far in this football game, has co played complete football. Oh, absolutely. Their uh, they're defense is swarming, and their offense is uh, on fire. So after putting up 57 last week, UCCS finds themselves down by a couple of touchdowns early. Cross will fire on the far side. Ball is up. That's great defense on the outside. Intended for his receiver number 13. Good defensive secondary pass play for Metro State. He was right in his hip pocket. Oh, and that, that ball should have been caught. It was in the receiver's hands. Yep. If you can touch it, you can catch it. That's a famous saying by any coach that coaches wide receivers. If you can touch it, you can catch it. So here we go. 5.53 left in the first quarter. Cross out of the shotgun. Twins receivers on both sides. A running back to his left. at the, He stands at the 40. Back. He's got good time. Fires in the far, near side. Flat this time. Good coverage by the linebacker for Metro State number 55. And he had a big, he had a monster game last week. 
Number 55, Robbie Romero. He had a great game last week, and he was right where he needed to be here. Yeah, he absolutely was. And uh, he was waiting for that receiver to, to catch the ball so he didn't get called for pass interference. And uh, fortunately for him, the receiver didn't hold on. Yep, footsteps. Third down and 10 from the 46 for UCCS. Christian Cross, the quarterback. He's got Twins receivers, his standard set so far, and a back to his left as he barks out the signals. Motion from the far side, coming all the way across. Cross looks right. He's going to get chased and pressured, and he's going to get sacked at the 33-yard line. Great defensive play by the Roadrunner defense, and they are playing stifling football. Absolutely. He's just choking the life out of UCCS right now. I tell you, watching UCCS tonight is like what it was wa uh, like watching uh, Metro State last week. That's a good way to put it because Metro State, I mean, it, we talked about it being week one, that the defense usually gels sooner. The offense just struggled. They had opportunities. They just weren't sure of themselves. This week, these guys come out swinging. Oh, they are. And so UCCS will punt again, third time tonight. Metro State's had the ball twice. They have scored twice. And the fake and the long pass down the far side, and he didn't get it intended for his receiver, Xavier Wilson, on the far side. But guess there's a flag on the play as well. At the 27, and we'll see what the officials have to say. So I tell you, that was a great, great, perfect time for a trick play. It was. And it was nearly executed. Roughing the passer. Still not a first. It's an automatic first down for the Mountain Lions. That's a big play for UCCS if they could culminate and get points out of this. Yeah, that's uh, you, you never, never, never want to give uh, the uh, opposing team an opportunity to stay in a fight. And I think that UCCS, I, I like the way that their, their staff thought on that play because they're down 14 nothing, still early, early in the game. They want to find a way to slow the, other, slow the other guy down. That's what they're trying to do. If we could, get, if we could catch him napping on this and get one down the sideline, that might be, might be a spark. But they're back on offense. Oh, and he loses control of the ball! And there's a... Metro State says that, and that is, it's Metro State ball. And just like that, it's a fumble. The quarterback, Cross, got swarmed under, lost control of the football, and Metro State forces the fumble, and they'll have the football at the 40-yard line of the Mountain Lions. Another great series for Metro State's defense. They're just getting it done. Wow. So, so far in this football game, the only two university club programs in the CFC so far, Metro State has dominated in this football game. Oh, this is bragging rights. It's a college against college right now. It is. It is. And both of these teams feel like they have a chip on their shoulder being in this semi-pro conference, and they got something to prove. And so far, Metro State is doing it tonight. Flag thrown at the 42 on the near side. Side judge will come to the referee. They'll talk about it. It's on Metro. Illegal substitution by Metro State. So hopefully, knock on wood here in the press box at Shea, we will not see as many penalties as we saw last Saturday night. That's, I've been broadcasting football for almost 13 years, and I cannot remember the last time I saw that many penalties in a football game. I've been watching football for 40 years, and <laughs> I haven't seen any <laughs> a game cannot, like that. I can't remember the last time. No, I have never seen a game like, like what we saw last week. So it'll be first and 15 at the 45, still in mountain line territory for the Roadrunners. Lettner, the quarterback, he's got twins receivers to both sides. Hands off to Willis, his running back. He's got a little bit of room, and he's still pushing. Good physical punishing run by Willis. And he pushed that stack into another three yards. You know, he had some plays last week where we thought he, he was going to get to the corner, get to the edge. He just quite wasn't there. This week, something must have happened in practice with this offensive line in him. I don't know, but there's a lot of trust going on down there. The chemistry is definitely working tonight. Yep, he's a he's a he's good runner. He's got that he's got that good that good uh, step to the outside, get to the corner. But also, he's proven he's got some power up the middle if he needs it. Yep, he definitely uh, he pushed that pile. So Willis, he will stand behind Letner. Twins receivers split to the near side, one receiver to the far side. Yep, and the fake, and Lettner looks to pass in the flat, and he's got the catch! 
And he's right at the sticks. I think he got it up. He's down at about the 28-yard line. And they're going to move the sticks. That's a first down, first pass of the game. And Jared Lettner, he's one for one. Yeah, that, can't, you cannot complain about that. I'm they sorry, are, Jeff Lettner. Jeff they're Lettner. firing on all cylinders tonight. They're doing a great job offensively, defensively, and special teams. Uh, right. All three phases of the game, they are clicking tonight. I remember having a coach say that if a guy asks to wear number one, he better be a pretty darn, darn good ball player if you want to wear number one. So Lettner looking comfortable talking to his – teammates in the huddle this offensive line of metro state has done a stellar job so far in this football game offensive line defensive line they uh, they've both been controlling the line of scrimmage so uh let's hope we see a lot more of that tonight by metro state yep they're looking to pile it on again they're threatening and knocking at the door at the 28 of uccs the toss to the near side he's going to try to get back up inside he's got some room tries to break back inside and great play defensively by the mountain lions at uccs and making the tackle for the Mountain Lions, Jesus Chavez, 5'9", 230. The defensive back came in and made a good tackle. Yeah, and they sniffed that out from the start. Uh, he had nowhere to go, had to go break back the other way, still nowhere to go. Yep. Ended up losing more yards other than if he had just gone down. The ball carrier that time, that was his first carry. Number 24, Dominique Nowles on the carry there. Looked like he was going to try to get something going. He was going to try to hit the brakes, come a near side, Get, uh, get everybody flowing that way and try to go back the other way, but too much backside pursuit by UCCS. Absolutely. And there's nowhere to go uh, either direction. They had people swarming everywhere. Yep. Letting her out of the shotgun. He'll hand right through the middle, and that's lack of Veta. He'll get down to the 30. So good little quick slip dive to lack of Veta, number 15. He scored, two, he scored uh, two touchdowns already. He's the team leader in touchdowns so far this early season. And they're going to have a third down. And, and ten. 10, but even third down and 10, they get a few yards out of this. They should be well within field goal range. Yeah, and they, they got themselves uh, the yards that they lost in the previous play. They got those back. Let's see what they uh, get done. Yep. So at the 28, clock 144 and ready here in this first quarter of play at Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. George Holden and Eric Galserin. Good offensive showing so far tonight by Metro State. Lettner, he's got a third and ten, biggest play of the night for him. Out of the gun. Play action, far side, comes back near side, he's got time. Fires down the far sideline, he's got the receiver. Touchdown, Metro State Roadrunners. And they're lighting it up here at Chase Stadium. Beautifully executed play. Wow. And the play action was beautiful, came back, his play developed, his backside kept him in a little, little bit of a pocket and a cushion there, fires it to his receiver. His receiver falls backwards and makes the catch in the end zone. And just like that, it's 20 to nothing, Metro State. Yeah, and I, I just love the way they have him rolling out. Hey, you can tell that he's super comfortable rolling out um, out to the flat to get those shots downfield. It's a, a fantastic play, well executed. And, uh, wow, credit to the offense. They uh, – they, Answered the uh, answered the bell tonight. Yep, and that's number 81. We're looking for him on this makeshift roster. But I'll tell you, we just talked about turnovers. Points off of turnovers are critical in any football game. And they were these roadrunners on, on, on the defensive side. They they force the fumble and they're rewarded by their offense. They go down and score. Absolutely, the uh, the offense is definitely taking care of the defense, and the defense is taking care of the offense. They are definitely uh, working together tonight. 81, it's uh, <coughs> Gugan, I want to say, 81, <coughs> Ramon Gugan with the touchdown, and the extra point is good. We are seeing in the first quarter of play at Shea Stadium a drastically different football team offensively from last week. Metro State all over UCCS, 21-0. George Holden, Eric Galserin, you're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media, Metro State Football, and the Colorado Football Conference will take a quick break. We'll be right back.
back to Shea Stadium here in Highlands Ranch. So far, it's been all Metro State. Roadrunners kick off. Decent kick. It hangs. And about drops at the 25, bounces back to the 21. And here come the Mountain Lions. They need field position in a big play. And he has dropped and dropped hard, but he gets a good return out of it. All the way down to about the 37-yard line. And that was number 11 for the Mountain Lions, Xavier Wilson. So, Eric, so far in this football game, we have seen, I know it's still, we've, we haven't even gotten through a quarter yet, and Metro State offensively has done a 180 from last week. Oh, 100% 180. And they, not only that, but just uh, defense is showing up. Uh, every single series, UCCS has started with great field position. And they can't and get anything out of it. And they got nothing. Yep, and th that turnover that they had, Eric, a little bit ago, we talked about points off of turnovers. They were, there's a difference between being down by two touchdowns and three touchdowns mentally. That's a big difference. Absolutely. That, that hurts a lot. And they have a big hole to, uh, to climb out of tonight. Let's see uh, how they respond. The Mountain Lions are going to have to go. Be oh, and he cross mishandles the shotgun snap. And that's going to go back to the 31. They'll lose yardage on first down. It'll be second and long and 15. Yeah, that was unfortunate. He could actually probably save that play. I, I don't think he realized that he was the only one that knew that that ball hit the ground. Yep. So I think UCCS maybe coming out of the gate, scoring 57 at home in your opener, feeling good. Then you go on the road for your first game, and this is a wake-up call right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, like we uh, spoke about last week, uh, when we were seeing the the Pirates game, the you the Metro State their their defense was doing an outstanding job, and we were talking about how 57 points against a, another team that is playing Ironman football might not work out the same way. Might not way. work out the same way when you're playing a squad that has uh, deep uh, that are deep as in players as you are. Yep, I would agree. There's a timeout on the field. Metro State's defense, UCCS's offense. This is week two of Colorado Football Conference football, and we're getting set. We will be back on the air. We do the Met right now the Metro State home games. We'll be back on the air June 9th right here at Shea Stadium. Some of the games coming up next week, Metro State will be at the Denver Sharks, the Rocky Mountain Wildfire at the Steel City Rage in Pueblo. The Colorado Raptors of the Springs will be at the Northern Colorado Nightmare. UCCS will be at the Flames down in Colorado Springs, and the Inglewood Eagles will take on the Denver Pirates. That's week three coming up next week. Had a we had a lot of fun here on Steve Weed Media last week at halftime with former Bronco legendary wide receiver Mark Jackson. He's here again tonight. We had a chance to chat with him for a while at halftime. What a what a fun interview that was. That's absolutely spectacular guy. Uh, humble, humble guy. Just absolutely very easy going. Very easy going. You just got to love him. You know, how, how could you not like him? He's in his 50s, and I'm telling you, he looks like he could still play a little bit. Yeah, he, he does. He, he looks, looks like, like he's in his 30s. He looks like he could still he, he he could still get it done. I'm sure he can. If I started a flag football team, I'd call Mark Jackson. 49.7 <laughs> seconds left. And oh, and he is thumped, but he gets a good carry out of it. Number 8, Dorian McDowell, but he got thumped hard by that roadrunner defense. Picks up some of what they lost. But they're going to get at least out of this third and four. That's third and manageable now at the 43. Yeah, that opens up the playbook a lot. It changes things. Changes things from an offensive play calling aspect. We're under 20 seconds left in this first quarter, which the Roadrunners, they're loving it. Yeah, how could they not be? They're up 21 points on a team that put 57 up on the, their previous team. He can't Pass over the middle. Pass is caught. Oh, takes a shot. It's dropped at the 50, but he does hang on to it. Good catch by Xavier Wilson. 3.4 seconds left, and it's going to run down. And, folks, at Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, we are one and done. After one quarter of semi-pro football, the only two university club football teams in this league, the home team, the Roadrunners of Metro State, are all over UCCS 21 to nothing. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Gausser, and stick with us. We'll take a quick break and bring you all the second quarter action here in Highlands Ranch. You're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media, the voice of Metro State Football 2018.
You're not a player. You're not worried about how cold it's going to be. You know, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Nope. Just about speaking. Yep. That's all you got to do. And sometimes that's even the challenge. It can be. If you work with a guy like me, the guy like Eric Gausser, it can be very challenging. Sometimes. We go back to the fundamentals and the basics. Shotgun. Fires flat. Got it. Near side. Good pitch and catch by UCCS out to the 35 on the near side. They'll get a first out and move the sticks. Number 12, Elijah Ashton. 5'7", 175 for the Mountain Lions makes the catch. And the UCCS with the first down, they've got something going here. Oh, absolutely. They are they're moving the ball well. Uh, they are doing – it looks like they finally figured some things out. So we'll see if they can keep this going against Metro State. And UCCS, I know there's a lot of football left to play, Eric, but they've got to be thinking points now. They've got to get something on the board. Oh, absolutely. And, and it can't be a field goal. They, they've got to put, uh, they they gotta put get seven the on the board. Yep. Yep. Help this defense out a bit. Yeah, so that defense has been on the field a long time, and this game is barely into the second quarter. Cross out of the gun. Twins receivers to the near side. One split way far wide. The handoff through the middle. He's got room trying to get to the corner, and he'll get pushed out of bounds. And that's number eight, Dorian McDowell. He's been the workhorse for the Mountain Lions. And it's going to be second down. Good pickup. Good look at drive so far for UCCS. Yeah, that, not bad. They've got two yards to go for a first down. We'll see what they can do. Like I said, we're, we're doing all the, uh, so far, the home games for Metro State this season here on Steve Weed Media. We'll be back on the air on June 9th, right back here at Shea Stadium. Unless anything changes, if it does, check out steveweedmedia.com for any updates or changes. Yeah, so I think that they just needed to settle down a little bit, and uh, we'll see what they are able to accomplish. And number seven at quarterback right now, that's Xander Offit. He's in at quarterback, six foot, 196, a change. And Offit, fake, fires, the slant near side, he got it. He put some, a little bit of heat on that football, got his receiver. And that's number 10 on the receiving end, Alejandro Alanis. So maybe a change behind center might spark something. Oh, they moved the six again, and uh, they're marching down the field. So Offit's got something going. They had cross in earlier in the first quarter. It's not, it's not that he did a bad job. He had some good throws. It's just sometimes a change of face that just any little thing in the huddle can make can, can make make all the difference in yeah. the world. So they're, they've got their first good-looking drive of the night here offensively. And Metro State's defense has held them scoreless. And I tell you, it's almost like a – being a boxer you know you get a couple good hits to the face kind of you're dazed for a minute or two and then you kind of wake up that seems to be what's going on with UCCS yep. right now off it fires he wants it all to the end zone he's got a receiver he's got it and it's a touchdown mountain lions the first one of the night a change in quarterback has put points on the board for UCCS and on the receiving end was number 11 Xavier Wilson for the touchdown that was a beautifully executed play he put that ball he had double coverage in the corner of that end zone. He put some serious heat on that football, and it got there. And it was right on the money, and only he could catch it. Yep. So just like that, the Matt Lions, they are now on the board. They've got a heartbeat now. They're right back in it with a score. But you got to make sure to get this extra point here. We saw last week how mentally, remember last week where you saw the Pirates, they, yep, they missed two-point conversion, then they missed the PATs. That kept – this Roadrunner football team in that football game, if they started, if they were making those, that could have made it a lot worse. That game could have been over earlier. Oh, absolutely, because then you get into the head of your opponent and just put the, the the game out of reach. The game last week was always within reach for Metro State. Yep, and the game of football can change quickly, and it has here at Chase Stadium. So tonight, UCCS, they get on the board for the first time. They're down 21-7 to the Metro State Roadrunners. George Holden, Eric Gausser, and Steve Weed Media from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Stick with us. We'll be right back with more Colorado Football Conference football with Metro State.
Welcome back to Shea Stadium, Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Hope you're enjoying semi-pro football in mid-May. That's when the semi-pro football season takes place. And right now, UCCS has got life back. They've got their first points of the night on a big touchdown pass from their new quarterback, Offit, to Wilson in the corner. And it's going to be fumble, but he'll get on top of it. There was miscommunication on the kick return team, Eric. They get it out. They're about the 39-yard line. Good field position. But this is not the time for this roadrunner bunch to start letting the wheels come off. No, absolutely not. That's the last thing you need is to uh, open up uh, a, a, an opportunity for UCCS to come back and get really back in this football game. And Cru Christian Cross, the quarterback that played the whole first quarter, he's now in the game playing, playing safety. So we'll, they're going to move some of these guys around, obviously, and we'll, we'll see what happens here. Metro State, they've scored every time they've had the football. I don't think they've even had a punt yet. No, they, they have, have not. They have not punted the football. So let's see. They've just gotten an answer from the Mountain Lions. they got to march right back down the field and score again. That's what this game's about, putting your opponent away. Take so, out the, taking out the trash. Yep. Lettner out of the shotgun. He'll hand off to his running back who tries to get to the outside. There's, a, there's like a face mask out of that. They're not going to call it. But good defense by UCCS, and the last man coming in there to clean up for UCCS, number 93, James Erickson, 6'3", 240 for the Mountain Lions, comes in and cleans it up. Good defensive play by UCCS. Yeah, that was a great stop. Uh, they sniffed that one out almost from the onset of that play. Uh, I think that uh, Metro State's going to have to open up the playbook a little bit more and get uh, their air attack going. I would agree. Because you want your offense to be multi-dimensional, not one-dimensional. So clock's under 11 minutes in this first half on a chilly night in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Lettner in the gun again. Had the one touchdown pass tonight. Receiver split to each side. Shotgun, he's going to throw. He's got time. Fires over the middle, and the pass is caught, and that's Lacavetta, Jordan Lacavetta. He's oh, look at that, Jordan Lacavetta stuck a stiff arm out there, and he got just enough for the first down. He should have made, got the first down of that. But what a great one-handed catch! Oh, absolutely, a great catch. And after the play, or after the catch, the yards after, he got the first down. He should have been tackled. He he worked for that first down. Jordan Lacavetta, back when I was a QB years ago. He's the kind of guy you look for when you're in trouble because he's going to make a catch in traffic and he's going to turn a five-yard play into a 12-yard play quickly. Absolutely, and that's exactly what he did. Yep, 44-yard line. They move the sticks. Lacavetta on the pitch and catch from his quarterback, Lettner. Twins receivers split to each side. One back. That's Willis right behind Lettner. Yep, he's going to do the draw, and, and Willis is going to put his shoulder down. Good punishing run by Willis. He just shoved the guy out of the way. He got, there was not a lot there, but he was going to get something out of it. Yeah, he, he worked for every square inch of it he got. Man, Willis. He's a bruiser. He doesn't look like a really big guy, but he's solid. You can tell he's very solid. I'm sorry, uh, number six uh, on here, not Willis, Ernest Mixon the third. That's number six. We're trying to see here from up in the press box. It's a little hazy up here. We apologize. Either six or five. It's tough to tell. Aaron Knox is number five. Good time for Lettner. Sets, if he sets his feet, he can get rid of it. Throws it. And the pass is caught. And he's going to try to come all the way across. And that's Lacavetta, I want to say again. Jordan Lacavetta at the 50. This kid's fun to watch. He is absolutely fun Anytime to watch. Anytime he touches the football, anything's possible. That's the kind of guy you like. Oh, absolutely. He makes the game exciting. Yep. And coming out for... Metro State trying to get the number. There's a glare. I, I apologize, folks. It's just tough up here to see some of the numbers. It's number five that just came out of the game. I do know that that's number five for Metro State. It's third and four. Very manageable right at midfield. Metro State with a 14-point lead. They'd like to tack on to that. Lettner, his go-to guy in the air has been Lacavetta, number 15. Lettner fires. Far side. He's got him. And that's a first down for Metro State and Lacavetta. He's got more all the way down to the 30-yard line. But that wasn't Lacavetta that time. He spread the ball around. That looks like number 21. That's Mo. Mohamed Alsadi. Mo with the catch, and they move the sticks. Jared Lettner 
looks like a different quarterback in one week in the pocket that he did last week with the Pirates. He just does. Yeah, and uh, that's got to be the protection. He's uh, He's got time to look. He's got time to throw the ball. He's got time to go through his progressions, unlike last week. Yep, I agree. And so Lettner, is that, this offensive line to me for – Metro State offensively, this first half, the offensive line is the, is the story. They're, they're getting it done in the ground and pound and in the air. Oh, absolutely they are. Uh, both sides of the ball, the UCCS or Metro State has been controlling it, so we'll see if they can continue to do so. And he so. gets away, and he cuts up inside and picks up a couple yards out of absolutely nothing. He came to the near side, hit the brakes, spun around, broke a couple tackles, and still picks up two. Should have been a tackle for a loss. His running style reminds me of a guy you'll remember well that played for the Raiders and the Chiefs, Marcus Allen. He gets going all one way, hits the brakes, stops, and just makes everybody miss. It comes. That's what that reminds me of. Yeah. And that run in the Super Bowl he had with, with the skins way back in the day. The, getting, getting folks to over-pursue on the defensive side and then having that, that faith in yourself to bust it around the other way. He's deceivingly fast, so uh, angles are very important in this, uh, in this game for UCCS to contain him. I would agree. C closing in at seven minutes in the first half, and the Roadrunner offense is on the move. Lettner. Receiver split to each side. He's going to hand out. Nope, he's going to fake. Lettner's looking to load up. Fires to the back of the end zone. Oh, and he's got it. He's got it. He held on to it. Number seven. Number seven gets the touchdown for Metro State. Wow. Number seven, Marcel Willis. So the second touchdown pass of the night by Lettner. And Lettner took his time, took his time, waited for that play to develop. And his, he had that post pattern backside. And he bobbled it in the back of the end zone, but he hung on to it. Hey, as long as you hold on, that's all that matters. Yep, just don't have to look it. pretty. Just no, catch just it. Just get it down. Pull it down. Come up with it. I used to have a coach say, it hurts a lot less. You're, sometimes it hurts when you catch the ball and you get hit, but it hurts a heck of a lot less when you make the catch. Absolutely. Kick is up. And through and true, no problem for Metro State. They've had four drives. The result, four touchdowns here at Shea Stadium. They increased their lead by 21. The score, 28-7. Metro State leads UCCS here in Highlands Ranch. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Gausser. And stick with us, folks. We got 647 left in a high-octane, rapidly moving first half. You're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media, the voice of Metro State football for 2018. Back to Shea Stadium and getting set for the kickoff here, Metro State to UCCS. Metro State, impressive, really impressive. They give up that one touchdown a little while ago, Eric, and they come right back down, march right back down the field and score. UCCS has got their work cut out for them. And here comes the Mountain Lions down the middle, trying to get a good return out to about the 37-yard line, number 11. Brings it down for the Mountain Lions, and that's Xavier Wilson. Uh, We're still working on rosters as well folks we, again we do apologize for that trying to get names and numbers coming in as soon as we can there's still a lot of trading going on and that kind of stuff in this league it's an exciting league as you if you notice just in the first quarter and a half of play how quickly things can can move here yeah absolutely and uh, an another great start for uccs a uh, field position has not been an issue tonight nope. for them at all every possession they've had They've had a phenomenal field position. And, Eric, if you're UCCS, you know as well as I do, and I found myself in this position, you get yourself in this, you're down 28-7 in that huddle. It's got to be back to work. Back to work, one play at a time, find a way. Guys, make plays. F somebody find a way, make plays, find find open space in the passing game. All we need is one, one or two big plays to bust this thing open. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely true. They just need each person to do their part to, uh, to make it make it work. They're showing blitz. Metro State, the flag intended for Wilson on the near side. 
Flags at the 34-yard line near side, and I want to say offsides on Metro State. They they were showing blitz. They were they had their ears pinned back. They were, they were wanting to get after it. Yeah, but you got to wait for it to snap first. You do. That's part of the they, – they used to yell at the guys on defense all the time, that, that hey, you guys go on moving to the football. Just look at the football. But in the heat of the game, heat of the moment, you guys – a guy knows it's his shot to blitz. He wants to get after it. So sometimes those nerves play a, a big factor. It doesn't matter if it's Pop Warner football or when you play in the NFL. Nerves play a factor. 638 left in the first half of this football game. You can see the clouds hanging heavy over the mountains. Quick shot, pass, near side, caught. Wilson's got the catch and a good tackle by the Roadrunners. And that was number 30 for Metro State making the tackle. Glenn Mascarenas with the tackle. Good ankle tackle. Make sure to get him down. He's second and one for the Mountain Lions. Another great pass, another uh, great play by UCCS. Uh, it seems like they've uh, found their rhythm. They're starting to systematically move that ball. Yep, yep. And they're down by three touchdowns, but you got to start somewhere. As long as you keep those sticks moving, the game ain't over. Yep, off it gets the handoff. Another flag. Looks false like it's going to be false start on UCCS, so they're going to give up the yards they just got. Uh, that's unfortunate. They really needed that. Uh, that just – that hurts so much. You, you've got that short yardage situation. You've got an open playbook. You can run. You can pass. You can do anything you want. You get a penalty like that, puts you back. Now it really limits your options. Yep. It changes, changes the play call, that's for sure. Everybody needs to be on the same page in the same book. 544 and counting. Clock continues to move here at Chase Stadium. Mountain line quarterback off it out of the shotgun. Fires far side. Got his receiver. That's a good-looking throw. A deep slant. And hits him, and he's into Roadrunner territory after that pitch and catch in number 10. Alejandro Alatas on the reception for UCCS. That was a great throw, great catch, and a great tackle. Yep. So whatever UCCS is getting, uh, Metro State's defense is making them work for it. They're definitely going to make them work for it. And the big – Things so far we've seen in the first half, as much action as we've seen, one turnover, and it was caused by these these roadrunners, and they got seven points out of it. That could be a factor when this game gets close down the stretch. That could be a factor. Oh, absolutely it can be because this game could have been one score instead of three. Absolutely. So trips receivers to the near side. First down, one receiver to the far side. Empty backfield for UCCS. Fires to the running back at the near side. Miss makes it miss one tackle, and he gets cleaned up. And around the 48 of Metro State, he'll pick up a few. It'll be second down and long. Well, he slowed him down, but you got to make those. You got to make those tackles, especially for a loss. You want those guys to have to work for every yard they get. You don't want to give them any extras. When you run that screen, when you've got quads and you got to run that to either side, the one thing they'll always tell that guy that back: make the first guy miss. You got to make the first guy miss. You know, he did was able to do that. He got some yards out of it, but they're, they're, they're trying to look for an alley down the sideline. So off and out of the gun, two backs. Hell, it's a little bit of a counter and a good tackle by Metro State. They thump him and thump him hard. He might lose a yard out of that. Good job by the Roadrunners. And number 10 was one of the tacklers in there for Metro State. Number 10... Brandon Halperin, he had a pretty big game last week. Yes, yes, he did. You know, the UCCS has had some success throwing the ball. Not much success on the ground, though. Nope. And their quarterback, he, he's, he's shown when he throws, like, slants and, and some of these routes over the middle, very effective. I mean, he's got a laser beam arm. He can get it right there. The difference is, is when you start getting the middle of the field, you start using pump fakes and things like that so you can freeze the defense and go over the top. But that gets into a lot of other things from a – Coaching perspective. Good time. Chops his feet. Long down the side. He's got a wide open receiver at the 25. Breaks a tackle all the way down to the 22. But I think we have a flag on the field, and it's down oh, at the 41 on the near side. That was a good-looking play. Well, very well executed, at least on that side of the field, the far side of the field. Yep, and we'll see who it goes against. He had good time to throw that ball. 
His receiver got open on the far side, made a big play out of it. I think it's going to go against UCCS. Yeah, I have a feeling you're right. You know, I got to say, I, I'm surprised that Metro State didn't pick up on that on that pass play because he was telegraphing that where he was throwing the ball the entire time. Yep. And that's why a little, you know, they're going to back UCCS up with another penalty. That's why it goes back to every little bit makes a huge difference as a quarterback. Speaking as an ex-quarterback and a coach for quarterbacks is that actual pump fake is a huge advantage that you can have because you're playing chess with those guys on defense. And some of these guys stick so close in that secondary and they cover so well, you need every little advantage you can get. That's, that's one of them. There'll be a quick timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. Shea Stadium, 312 left in this first half of play. An exciting first half. And the Roadrunners of Metro State, they lead 28-7 over the Mountain Lions of UCCS in Colorado Springs. George Holden, Eric Gausserin, you're watching and listening to Metro State Football on Steve Weed Media. We'll be right back. Back to Shea Stadium at Highlands Ranch. We're having a good time calling semi-pro football here in mid-May. I think it's fun that they do the Colorado Football Conference during the spring and the summer because you don't have football. And in the fall, you've got high school, college, and pro. And then when it's all – because you're saturated with football, right? We all love it. But then you, 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 you need your fix because it's over. Oh, it's an in absolute February, drought. It's over. Yeah. If you don't want, and I don't mind basketball. I don't watch as much basketball. I, do, I love basketball, but I watch more football. So when I don't have that, it's more of a, uh, you know, where's the fix? This is a great, a great thing for to be able to do that. Oh, absolutely! It's a perfect timing to do it now. You've got all your uh, pro teams and your college teams and high school teams all doing their spring training. Uh, they're you know ramping up, getting things going, and then you actually have this to be able to watch and. Uh, Oh, that was unfortunate. It looks like he did not run the route he was supposed to. And off it, the quarterback for UCCS tried to go far side again, and his receiver wasn't even near where he needed to be. Good coverage by Metro State. It's going to be fourth and 13, and they're going to be forced into punt mode. Yeah, that, uh, that was a missed opportunity there. Uh, it looks like the quarterback wanted him to do an out pattern, and he was there, just he, going up he's the gonna field. He's going to go for it. He's going to go. They are going to go for it down here, unless, he, unless it's a pooch punt. We're going to see here. Fourth and 13 on their own 47. UCCS, the Mountain Lions are gutsy. And yet, it's a pooch punt. That's what he's going to do. Good looking kick. Is it going to go to the end zone? And it will. So it was the pooch punt. And Metro State just crawls across the goal line. Metro State will start at their 20 yard line. That was lucky. That was almost another play pinned back at the one yard line. Yep, that's huge. But with a 28-7 lead, three minutes, they've proven so far in this first half they can move the ball quickly down the field. So we'll see what, the, what Lettner and that offense. And Lettner in the last couple of series has spread the ball around well. Absolutely. He's looking at other receivers. Lack of vet is the go-to guy. When you get in trouble, he's your guy who, who is going to bail you out. Fire call, that, that kind of stuff. But the, uh, these other guys have stepped up. They've come out. They've run good routes. They've gotten open. A lot of times, that's really all it takes is giving a guy an opportunity. And when you get that opportunity, making the most of it. Yep, absolutely. Which, unfortunately, they did a very poor job of last week. But it looks like they figured it out this week. Something changed this week. Hard to say. It could be one thing. It could be several things. But whatever it was, it was good for this Metro State football team. And Lettner will come out of the shotgun. Twins receivers to the near side, one to the far side, and two backs, the offset eye behind him and the handoff he's going to try to get around the corner he's got a block but and a good hit by the mount lions 
That was Lacavetta on the carry. Number 23 with the hit, Charles Adrian for UCCS. Not a big kid, Charles Adrian, 145. Uh, that was a lot of running for five yards. It was. Sometimes, yep, yep. I remember having coaches that would yell at running backs. I remember doing drills, you know, like a lot of times I had it easier because I'm, I'm basically pitching or handing off the running backs. And you'd hear coaches yelling about, I want north-south runners. I do not want east-west runners. You'd hear a lot of that going on. But some of these guys, it's so much of they're born with that, their DNA, that instinct to be able to make a play out of nothing. You don't mess with that. You let those guys do what they do because they're playmakers. So the fake and the reverse going the other way, and he fakes that one, and he's still on his feet over the 40 after the 45-yard line. Good pickup by Metro State. That was number 41, and that's Michael Maddock with the carry. Nice carry on the reverse. And nice open field uh, stop by UCCS. Uh, had Otherwise, he he's still running. Oh, yeah, that would have been to the house. And it's 205 and counting. Metro State, can they can really milk this drive. The two-minute warning in the first half. We'll take another quick timeout as well. George Holden, Eric Galsrin. Right now, the home team, they're loving it. Metro State, they start the season 0-1. They're leading big time over the 1-0 UCCS Mountain Lions, 28-7 here in the first half. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, the final two minutes of the first half, George Holden, Eric Galsrin. You're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. We're back at Shea Stadium. Two-minute warning. And so far tonight, pretty much it's been all Metro State University football. Letner, a flag that's either offsides on UCCS or it's going to be false start, which it is on Metro State. They'll back them up five. And if I'm, if I'm Letner, Eric, the quarterback of Metro State in the passing game, I'm looking for number 15. I'm looking to get him in some running room, maybe some kind of mistype direction across the middle with a lane or an alley, something to get him into open field. Yeah, a post maybe. Something downfield, get him on one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's, that's, that's what you want. You want that guy in man-to-man -man coverage. And they've got twins receivers to both sides. One running back right behind Lettner. UCCS... Knows they need to make a stop here before halftime. The fake, and Lettner will get away. He'll fire down the sideline. He'll look for lack of Veta, but that was, it was thrown out of bounds. It'll be second down and 15 from their 37. Oh, and he's slow to get up. Yep, so he, he got pulled last week after he got injured. A, a timeout by Metro State. Lettner, the quarterback, kind of walking around a little funny on that right foot or ankle. Can't tell which what it really is. He's just kind of – he might have just gotten it nipped a little bit down there with 154 left in the first half of play. I want to remind you, if you're a business in Colorado, anywhere, Colorado Springs, Denver, anywhere in the state, you, want, you need an infomercial, commercial, anything you need shot video-wise, any production – you need to contact steveweedmedia.com out of Colorado Springs. He's the man with the plan. He'll find a way to make it work for you. Go to steveweedmedia.com for all the contact information. It's George Holden, Eric Galsrin. This is fun. I, 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 I love football. I love being around football. You know, it just especially in a league like this where I don't know if a lot of you who are watching this have know a lot about the CFC. These guys aren't paid to play this. These guys have jobs they go to every week. Some of them have families or they're going to school or whatever the case may be. And they're putting themselves, their, their bodies on the line down there. Oh, this is all heart for sure. Yeah. And these guys, if you've never done it, go to a semi-pro football game, stand near the sidelines and watch the speed and the contact of the game. These are, these are guys that are getting after it. They love the game. And I, I always go back to this. I revert to this for years, but I had a coach in 
peewees years ago that looked at me and he said, George, if you love the game, it'll love you back. And it's very true. And that's what these guys are proving by being out here on this field tonight. So Lattner, he looks like he's going to gut it out. Out of shotgun. Looked like that right leg or foot was hurting him. A whistle. Officials are going to confer. Maybe they'll, they. they'll resume play. But I just want to make every, sure everybody was in the right place. And they do. Twins receivers again. One back behind Lettner at the 37. Drops back. Throws it to the flat. He's got his receiver. He's got a little running room. Out to the 40. Just back inside. Back to the 50. And out of bounds. What a great play call. And executed great. Number five. The, the guy out of the backfield for Metro State. We had him earlier. Number five, Aaron Knox. Did Great. a phenomenal job, made two guys miss. And got out of bounds. Makes guys miss. That is, uh, that's field awareness by Aaron Knox. I got to pick up some first downs, make some guys miss, but got to make sure I don't want to burn a timeout down here. I'm going to need him. So let, let's find a way to get out of bounds. And he does. Timeout. UCCS. UCCS. Big play by Aaron Knox in the Metro State offense. Take another quick timeout, 28-7, 144 left in the first half. But this Roadrunner offense is hungry. They're looking for more points. Stick with us, folks, in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. More Metro State football straight ahead here on Steve Weed Media. Back to Shea Stadium. A big third and two from midfield for Metro State. They've got a 21-point lead, but they're getting ready to go into halftime, and they want to try to put a dagger in the heart here before halftime. Lettner, motion by Lacavetta. He'll drop. Hit Lacavetta in the near side flat. Lacavetta, he'll get a few more yards out of it. Gets the first down, moves the sticks. Yep. And stops the clock. Yep. And the tackle made by number 52, Darian Brown for the Mountain Lions. So it'll be third, not actually first and 10, they got just enough. Clock will start again, it's at 140. And Metro State's offense impressive in this first half. Lettner looking for help, got his receiver. He's gonna get away over the 50. They're gonna have to use a timeout down here. 130, 129 continue, they're gonna have to get into the hurry up offense. They don't look too like they're trying to get, I'm not sure if I understand this here, Eric. They don't. They 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 seem kind of calm and content, but you got to take every advantage to score points. Yeah, you've got the ball. You got to get down the field. Letner will go back. Fires. Got his receiver over the middle and moves the sticks again at the 35 to the 34 yard line. Clock stops at 103, and right there, Letner fires a rifle shot to his receiver. That was number seven, I believe, for Metro State. He had a touchdown earlier. And, yep, Marcel Willis. Good catch. Lettner rolls to the far side. Looking long down the sideline and just overshoots his target. He had him, but he put a little too much on it. He got a little bit too excited for that one. Yep. You, however, stops the clock. It does. And even, even if Metro State... Doesn't get a touchdown. They've scored on pretty much every drive they've had. At least get in field goal range and get more points before halftime. Yeah, one way or another, you want to pile on the points. And you want that other team thinking about that. That's the last thing they remember from the first half is getting scored on again. Yeah, as opposed to them getting a stop. Absolutely. You don't want them building on anything. That's the game. Of, the, the game of football is extremely psychological. 
Macabetta in motion. Lettner. No, he'll pump. He'll go back the other way. Fires. And it's going to be picked off by UCCS at the 30-yard line. It was a good look at play, but Lettner just threw an errant ball there, and it hung up too long. And I want to say it's number 30, Kevin Eaves, that picked that ball off the defensive back for UCCS. First turnover by Metro State. Uh, one and one. Each team has turned the ball over now. The difference, Metro State did produce seven points out of that turnover. UCCS has 37 and a half seconds. Can they score that quickly? Uh, they're going to have to air it out. Right? Which means if you're Metro, you go into a little bit of a prevent defense here, keep everybody in front of you, yeah, and make I, the hit. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not a fan of prevent. Uh, it's it, I'm not, but it's a necessary part of the game. I, I've never been a fan of it. Uh, the, my philosophy is that it prevents you from winning. <laughs> Eric. Eric in his second football broadcast, and he is bringing you football wisdom here on Steve Weed Media. I'm afraid for the second half. Not a fan of the prevent. <laughs> prevent, yep. That's one of those things where a coach will tell his guys, keep everything in front of you, tackle, keep them in bounds. We'll, we'll see what happens here. Two deep safeties here. Perfect example, Saints. Yep. Uh, and he, Eric, Eric is also a Saints fan. He is currently in therapy for that. The long pass down the far sideline. He's got an open receiver, but overshoots him off it. Off it's got an arm. He was trying to go to Ale Alejandro Alanis. Um, off it's got an arm. He does have an arm. He needs to reel it in a little bit. It's like that when you get a young QB. I always used to tell guys that I coach this, but a young quarterback, you could show him early video of a guy named Brett Favre and how he would play, the gunslinger, throwing off his back, all that kind of stuff. As he got a little older, he, he toned it down a bit just enough to make him great. He went from good to great in a short period of time just because of the little things he learned to do. Just a little bit of tweak here and a little tweak there. Yep, yep. And that's the, that's the mental and, and emotional side of the game. For you him. know, the, uh, the other part about that is, did you notice that the Metro State defender was right on that receiver? Yep. Flags. UCCS is clapping. I think they think they drew them off. We'll see what the officials say. They're going to talk about it. And around the 20, they're going to congregate. Sometimes you wonder if they're saying, who's buying the hot wings tonight when we're done? Who's yep. paying for dinner? Uh, that was a costly mistake by Metro. Yep. Get some free yards with no time. Because you got 31.6 seconds. That's a lot of time if you can stop the clock and get some big plays going. So each team with one turnover in the first half, Metro State scores on – Almost every they had five possessions. They scored four out of five possessions. So pretty, pretty good night so far. Yeah, and they were marching down the field to score again. If it weren't for that turnover, they probably would have. Off it looks for his receiver, and he's got him. That's Wilson, the big kid, at the 44. He's into Metro State territory. Clock stops at 23.7 seconds. If UCCS finds a way to cut the deficit and get a touchdown here, I'm I'm telling you, if you're Metro State, that doesn't bode well in the locker room for you. Timeout, Metro State, 16.3 seconds. Metro, if, if I'm Metro State, defensively, Eric, I know that UCCS has got to throw the football down here. So what you've got to be looking for, Metro State in that huddle, is tip balls for picks. Errant passes, that kind of stuff. Put the heat on up front, force the bad throw, get the interception, and see if you can find a way to end this drive and end the half. And, and you know, if you're UCCS, you know that Metro State's going to be playing the sidelines. Yep. That might be your opportunity to run field. it down the middle of the field. You can run a streak right down the middle of the field. And this quarterback off at number seven for UCCS, he's got a good arm. He really does. So all he needs is, uh, is one of his guys to break loose in the secondary, and this game could change quickly. Highlands Ranch, Colorado. We're at a place called Shea Stadium. We have a direct view of the mountain range here and it's dark kind of grayish it might be raining over there by now who knows they said we may get some rain and precipitation here tonight so i saw the weather report earlier maybe around nine o'clock or so but this is colorado so anything's possible with weather so off it the last 16.3 seconds he'll go out of the gun a receiver split to each side Extra protection in the backfield. Goes far down the late far sideline. It's going to be picked off by Metro State. They're going to fight for it. 
And they're going to say, are they going to? They say UCCS got it. It was picked off by Metro, but UCCS fought to get the football. Are they going to get? They're going to give it to them inside the five yard line. Wow. Are you kidding me? What a wild play. It looked like it was intercepted. The receiver chases the defensive back and says, I got just as much right to the ball as you do. And rips it right out of his arms. It reminds me of a play that uh, you uh, you had with your team. Oh, years ago. Can I, I can tell you about some plays. We, we can talk more about that later yeah, on. Alex. Some wild plays from th – th that's what – you look at a game of football, you get paid a canvas sometimes when a game starts. You never know what's going to happen. You can think that you've got – like you have a battle plan and you've got plays ready and all this kind of stuff, but until the game unfolds chapter by chapter, you don't know. No, you don't. You just hope that your team is able to execute to the best of their ability. And it looks like the ball's right around the – I'm sorry, the ball's around the seven-yard line with 5.1 seconds left in the first half. What will UCCS pull out of their bag here? If they could get a touchdown and cut this to a two-touchdown game – we could be in for fireworks in the second half. We I, will see. I'm still dumbfounded that they were able to get that ball. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just effort going after it. All Off right. it looks. He's got time. He fires it back in the end zone, overshoots it. And it's a half. And that is going to be it. So UCCS knocks on the door at the seven-yard line at the very end of the first half, cannot come away with points. And that's where we stand right now. The Metro State University Roadrunners, the home team, they are up big 28-7. to seven over the Mountain Lions of UCCS here at Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. George Holden along with Eric Gausrin. We will take a quick break. When we come back, halftime, we'll be talking to you. More football, Colorado Football Conference. And you're watching Metro State Football right here on Steve Weed Media.
Welcome back, everybody. Shea Stadium getting set for second half action. Third quarter getting ready to begin. The home team, they're 0-1 so far in the season in week two, but they are looking poised, hopefully, for a big victory here tonight. They lead 28-7 over the Mount Lions at UCCS in Colorado Springs. George Holden and Eric Galserin, hope you've enjoyed the first half. We had fun, but a, kind of a wild finish to the end of that first half. It looked like an interception, and then the UCCS wide receiver fights and gets the ball back at the seven, and they were not able to punch it in. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Metro gets the ball first. Is that correct? I believe it was U it was UCCS that actually started off with the ball first. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, Metro State will be uh, receiving the ball uh, for the second half. Yep. I just want to remind you, folks, you like this semi-pro football. Next, The next two Saturdays, right here with Steve Weed Media, Steve is going to be on the road. The AFE versus FFA, May 19th, next Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Check that out right here on Steve Weed Media. And then the following Saturday... Freedom Fest, it's a uh, comedy special, May 26th. That'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on Steve Weed Media. Check out steveweedmedia.com for upcoming events and games and such. Should be a lot of fun. So number four will kick off for UCCS. They'll kick off to these red-hot roadrunners of Metro State from the 35. Good kick. Deep kick. All the way back to the 12. And here comes Metro State trying to get something going. They're looking for daylight. Cuts back inside. And he is hit hard and dropped at the 28-yard line. And that's where Metro State will set up shop. Yep. That's a nice kick by, <coughs> by Campbell. Uh, outstanding kick. Camden Campbell, six foot seven kicker. I mean, he's got some reach. Metro State and Lettner, the quarterback, he's had a couple of touchdown passes in this first half. He's looked very sharp. His offensive line has played stellar in this first half, whether it's the run game or the passing game. They scored on every possession but the last one they had when they actually turned the ball over, so not too shabby. Not too shabby at all, and uh, honestly, I, I think that they would have scored had they not turned the ball over. I agree. I agree. But sometimes it's, it's hard to find that perfect game, kind of like in baseball when a guy wants to pitch the perfect game. That's just tough. That is very hard. Every, everything has to go your way. Everything. It's got to be your night. The Metro State wants, they've played one very good half of football. They need another very good half to go one and one and come away with their first win of this 2018 football season. Well, thus far, they're off to a fantastic start. We'll see what type of uh, halftime adjustments each team made and see what we got going for the second half. Yep, and UCCS, they've got a mountain to climb. Still in this football game, but they got to make plays. Letner, he'll hand off on the misdirection. And he'll get a couple out of it. That's Dixon. He'll drive all the way out to about the 44-yard line. So that was a little bit of a counter misdirection play. It'll be second down for Metro State. He's picked up five. That was deceiving. It didn't look like he got that many yards. It, with Dixon, number five, it, he's one of these guys where he's got pretty decent speed on the outside. And we talked about this. When he gets up inside, he's a banger. I mean, yep. he's hard to take down. He does. He's got some power, and he'll drive the pile. Yep. He'll, he'll get that forearm out and pop you good and keep those legs moving. That's what you want good backs to do. Letner, he's got a back to each side and one straight behind him. That's Dixon and a receiver split to each side at his 44. He'll hand off on the end around, and he's got some room trying to bring him to the corner. If he kept running, he might have had the first down. Gets out to close to the 49-yard line. It'll be third and, and short. short. And that was number 17. He's also the backup quarterback. We saw him last week for Metro State, Ethan Vasquez. So three yards to go. Metro State offensively got it done in the first half. That's, that's an understatement. They were very, very impressive. On the ground, the air, Lettner looked like a different quarterback a week later. Now let's see. The important thing in a game like this, Eric, if you're 0-1, is finish. You've got to finish. It doesn't matter the first half that you played. You've got to be happy about it, but you've got to keep building. Absolutely. And then you've got to carry that momentum to all the way through to the end of the game. Don't want to be satisfied. Letner will hand off, and he'll get it. The first down and more. Nixon. And he's still he running. Out. Nixon to the 30, to the 20, all the way down the to the 15-yard line. Ernest Nixon. Wow. Nifty Nixon. I'm going to nickname this guy Nifty Nixon. 
You think he's down. We just talked about it. His ears were burning, and he keeps running. He's like that horse in the uh, horseman in the stable. You think he's going to stay still. The minute you open the door a little bit, he's gone. Wow. Yeah, they, they had him dead to rights, and uh, they had to let him loose. Yep. And he was chugging for all he's worth down the near sideline. And it's a one play makes a huge difference. They're at the 15-yard line inside the red zone. How's that for a highlight reel? Wow. And Nixon, and Nixon in the back. No, nope, he will be not in the back. He'll take a breather. Back to each side again and right behind. Lettner is going to give it to the second guy through. He's going to squirt through. He's going to get inside down to the five-yard line. Great push by that offensive line of Metro State again. It doesn't matter, Eric, who runs the football back there. They're getting positive yards. They are. They're, uh, their offensive line is doing a crack job tonight. Uh, they're getting it done. They're, they're just pushing the pile. Yep. That's, that's what you need. You know, we talk, we've talked about it. People want to see the pass game, the the – Aerial catches, the 40, 45 passes a game, yada, yada. NFL. But still, when you win championships and win football games, you've got to run the football, and that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're sticking with that ground game. And doing a great job of it at that. They are. First, it'll be second down, one to go. They can still get a first down here if they get inside the five. Yep, and Lettner's going to boot. Fires in the end zone. Got his receiver. Touchdown, Metro State Roadrunners. The third touchdown of the night for the quarterback, Lettner. And another great drive by Metro State marching down the field, having fun and getting it done, and they're piling it on. You know, had he actually handed that ball off, he still would have had a touchdown. What a great execution. And, and, and you know what? what? What set that play up was that they ran the ball so effectively down the field UCCS on the defensive side was going to cheat over, keep cheating over. They were running, and all it takes is a split second to go too far and have to gather and go back the other way. Let Lettner had daylight around the outside. He could have pump faked and run that thing in. And we got a flag. I'm going to say it's too much time. Nope, illegal substitution. So, illegal substitution. So Metro State will have a little bit longer PAT. They lead 34 to 7 here at Shea Stadium. That's turned into a little bit, it's not as cold as it was. It's the kick is up. And he's got it through and true, no problem. And just like that, once again, Metro State with another big touchdown drive here at Shea Stadium. They extend their lead 35 to 7 over the Mount Lions of UCCS. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Galstrin. We'll take a quick break when we come back. UCCS, they got their work cut out for them, and they'll get the football. You're watching and listening to Metro State Football and the Colorado Football Conference right here on Steve Weed Media. We're back, Shea Stadium. In Metro State, the story tonight, that offense has come alive for these Roadrunners in a one-week turnaround. They're 0-1, the Mount Lions, they're 1-0. Both teams, if the game keeps going the way it is, that both teams could be 1-1 one one after this game tonight. Ball falls off the tee. Frustrating for kickers when that happens. And he's going to get lack of Veta. Number 15, he had a big touchdown tonight. You're going to get him to hold the ball steady for him. I remember holding for kickers, and they're all picky. You know, they all got got to be over a little bit and back. You know, they all got these little things they got to do, but there's nothing like the sound of getting that and holding that ball and hearing that thunk when that ball goes. Watch it. That's a craft for sure. The kick is up. Long, deep kick all the way back to the five, and UCCS will bring it up. And he's going to get swallowed and drop back at the 15-yard line by Metro State. Good tackle by the Roadrunners. They played pretty good special teams tonight, too. Yes, they have. They've been playing all three sides of the ball uh, excellently. They've done a phenomenal job in uh, every every 
aspect of the game. You can't if you're a coach, uh, you've got to be happy with what Metro State's been doing tonight. Dominic Knowles, that looks who, looks like who that is. So we'll see what these bat lines of UCCS do. Lacavetta will check in on defense. Off at the quarterback. He's got twins receivers to the near side, one split far to the wide side from his 18. He'll hand off and a whistle and a flag at the 40. Metro, an illegal, another illegal substitution. And that all comes down to know where you are. Make sure that you know where you are. Know the scheme and personnel for that series. So that'll be a, a little bit of a break for the Mountain Lions. We'll get a little more breather room first and five. Off it, same offensive set. He'll get the snap, fires far side, overshoots his intended target. Good defensive secondary coverage by Metro State by the 30-yard line. And that pass is going to be incomplete. It'll be second and five from the 23. A, a lot of miscues by uh, UCCS tonight. Uh, definitely not what we uh, were expecting based off the score that they put up this past week. Nope, not at all. And we wondered when we heard that score here at Shea last week doing that Pirates game, you know, we knew that we was told the other team had – 23 guys were playing Iron Man. We weren't sure, you know, put up 57 points is a lot of points. Coming here tonight, they've got seven so far. So that lets you know, at least in my estimation, how good this Metro State defense is. The handoff through the right side. He'll get a couple out of it. And the ball carry was Dorian McDowell. Uh, just shy, they've got uh, maybe a yard to go. Tackle made by number 30, that's Glenn Bascaradis for the Roadrunners. Let's see if they can move the sticks on this. And they're going to need to get some breathing room. Third and two. This is very manageable for the Mountain Lions. They need to pick it up. Handoff. To the right side. And He'll get it. Got it. And a little more. That's McDowell. He'll get out over to the 35 to the 36-yard line on the near side. That's enough to move the sticks and another first down for the Mountain Lions. That was one of the best run plays they've had all game. Absolutely. And, you know, they're down by a bunch right now. And they've got a – yes, there's a lot of football to play. We've got 10-22 in the third. got a whole fourth quarter. But they've got to start thinking about, guys, we need points and points of plenty. Yeah, they've uh, got a very deep hole to climb out of, and they also need to figure out how to stop the Roadrunners. Yep, that's the, that's the big thing. Uh, offense has got to worry about generating points, and the defense has got to find a way. The defense of UCCS has got to force Metro State bad situations and get turnovers if they can. That's the best way to get back into a football game is turnovers. Oh, absolutely. And uh, the one that uh, they got earlier, it was wow! a, a poorly thrown ball. Wow, that was nearly picked off. That was intended for a Xavier Wilson on the far side. And there was a Metro State defensive back. His eyes lit up like he hit the jackpot. If, he, if that ball's a little bit lower, he's off to the races. So ill-advised throw there by Offit, Xander Offit. UCCS with a football team, the first year that they've had it. And they come away, they're 1-0 on the season right now, but that is, that is in jeopardy big time right now. Metro State has come to play here tonight. Second and 10 at the 36. Twins to the far side, one receiver split to the near side, a running back to the right of Offit. He'll give the handoff to McDowell, and he'll get met, met hard in the backfield, and he gets slammed, lasso to the turf, and one of the tacklers there, number 56 for Metro State, Lorenzo Perry. Yeah, he met a brick wall at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, all dressed up, nowhere to go. So UCCS is having a difficult time coming up with the right kind of plays to move the ball. 
Well, they're just not getting any penetration through that line. No, they're not. And that it, the big thing is you look at uh, even last week with Metro State, it was impressive to watch this defense as their offense could only score seven points, and they kept holding series after series after series. Now, it didn't help that the Pirates had the, had the amount of penalties they did. It would have been a different football game, but this, this defense hung around. Oh, absolutely. Off it with the pump fake. He'll go long. He's got a man down the sideline. Out of and bounds. And they said, nope, no catch. He caught it out of bounds. And that was number 11, Xavier Wilson. So it'll be punt time for the Mountain Lions again. Oh, I bet he wants that one back. Oh, it, those hurt. Good pump fake by Offit. Did a good job. A little bit of a pump and a shoulder fake. Free your guy. Get it down the sideline. But you got to get the throw a little quicker. And so, or are they going to go for it? I think it's going to be another pooch kick. Yep, and they're kind of slow to get personnel on the field. The mountain lions are. They better hurry up. Although I got to say, this would be a prime opportunity for a trick play. It would, because right now you're down by 28 points. You got a ways to go, and you need every little bit of help that you can get. And trick plays sometimes can be that spark that you need. Metro State has returners back at the 34 and the 25-yard line. Kind of like a, dot, a long dotted eye. Yep, pooch kick and a flag on the far side. That looked like it might have been offsides. Officials will talk about it. I think Metro State might have been a little bit too hungry for that. The Metro State, with the penalties so far in the third quarter, Eric, they've gotten a little bit sloppy. They need to clean that up. So it'll be fourth and five, but still fourth down nonetheless. But much more manageable for a trick play here. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you get a punt and you need five yards instead of ten yards, that changes things quickly. So we'll see what they do here. Off it, the quarterback also, he's the punter. For Metro State, they have one deep man. He's at the 40. He's got two up men. For all intents and purposes, it looks like a legitimate punt play. Nope. He's going to pass. Far sideline. Got a receiver. And it's caught on the far sideline. We talked about a trick play. Great pass and great catch by UCCS. Give them credit. Fourth and five. They find a way to get the big play, and they got a first down in Metro State territory. That was a beautifully, beautifully executed play. And that ball that had a nice spiral on it, and... No hesitation by him at all. He just let it fly. None. And the receiver was far enough inbounds that even if he had overthrown it a little, he would have been able to get to it. Yep. All the way to the 30-yard line of Metro State. So UCCS is looking for any play they could come up with to find a way to move them down the field and get points and get them quickly. Because that's what they need. Still a lot of time left on the clock. They can definitely get it done if they can figure out a way to stop Metro State. But this is only half the equation here. They've got the, the other side of the ball. They need to stop Metro State, and they have not been able to do so. It was Metro State's mistake that allowed they it not to drive. be. Yeah, I mean, the, the score would be 42 right now had they not I thrown agree. a pick. Off it, look it, chops his feet. He's in trouble. He's going to spin. He's going to run. And he's going to go all the way to the out to pass. The, he's going to get to the close to the 20 to another first down. He had pretty good time. This kid off it has shown a spark for these mountain lions with, with, with his, uh, his style of quarterback play. Yeah, uh, he's mobile. He gets around. He, uh, he can scramble. The guys, he's doing a great job. Yep. So they'll get another first down off the legs of off it. Xander Offit for UCCS, keeping the drive alive. 20-yard line. They're knocking at the door of the red zone, but they need points. Closing in on seven and a half minutes here in the third quarter. Timeout, Metro State, 735 left. Ball on the 20-yard line, and the Mountain Lions are threatening for the first time in this second half. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Gausser. We'll take a quick break. Once again, you're watching and listening to Metro State University Roadrunner Football right here in Highlands Ranch on Steve Weed Media. Stick with us. We'll be back.
Back to Shea Stadium. First and ten. And this is prime real estate for the Mountain Lions. They're in I formation. Receiver each side, off tackle play. And it's going to be swallowed up to the left side. They pick up maybe one second down. I want to remind you here on Steve Weed Media, um, if you like this semi-pro football stuff, Steve Weed, our owner, producer, next Saturday, the AFE versus FFA football game, Saturday, May 19th, 2 p.m. Eastern. It'll be right here on Steve Weed Media. And the following Saturday, the 26th, it'll be Freedom Fest. That's a comedy special. That'll be on 7 p.m. Eastern time on Steve Weed Media. Check them both out. Go to steveweedmedia.com for the details. I formation again, second and nine. Off it. He's going to audible. Oh, we got a flag. False start. And Mount Lions did not need that, Eric. They've already gotten a couple of big plays, and you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot with penalties when you're in striking distance of a score. Yeah, that was bizarre. It didn't even look like they were even set. Nope. But this Offit kid's impressive. He could, he could sling the rock a little bit. He also punts a little bit, which is, you know, that's, that's a big deal. Well, when you're multifaceted like that, it gives you the opportunity to open up that playbook and do things that other teams weren't expecting, which is why they're still on the field and not Metro State. I would agree. So off it. He'll go under center. Hasn't been under center much at all tonight. The toss to the near side, and he's got some. Oh! oh! And he is lit up like a Roman candle at the 25-yard line. Kaboom, number 19 for Metro State. And that was Tyler Lopez. He just dropped a hammer. That was a punishing tackle. And you saw the defense and the sideline just go nuts. And we used to call that passing out headaches. <laughs> oh, Telephone ring, oh, ring, not my house. Oh, yeah. That's definitely going to leave that was a lasting a, impression. That's a highlight hit. And when... Metro State watches Steve Weed Media for their game film next week. Tyler Lopez, we'll call him Tilo. He is going to be going, hey, check out my hit, guys. That's, that's how you do it. And boy, he, that was perfect timing. And that's what makes the game of football exciting, but also dangerous. Indeed it does. Wow. It looked like, it, he, looked like he had a big, gaping opening, a huge path, and then thunk. All right, third and long. Third and 14 at the 24. Mountain Lions need a big play. Off it, out of shotgun. Looks far side. Got his receiver, and it goes through his hands. It'll be fourth and 14. And down here, Eric, for all intents and purposes, do they have a field goal kicker that can kick it this far? And right now, when you're down 35-7, do you go for three? No, you, you can't. You've got to go for it. I agree. You need the touchdown down here. You, you got to go for it. You're down by 28 points. He's you you got to go for it. He's going to kick. Camden Campbell, number four, six foot seven kicker, is coming in. So they're not. They just they want points. You know, George. I, 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 either way, it's uh, this is a bad. It's a this is a bad recipe scenario. for disaster. Uh, either way, you've got the wind coming directly at you. Uh, it's at least ten mile an hour wind coming straight in your face. And, or Let's see if he can do or it. you go for the fake. Either way, you're you're. Uh, you're playing with fire right now. Off it with the hold, the kick, and you no said good. it, Eric. It's off. It is wide left. And on fourth and 14, the Mountain Lions, the UCCS, they go for the field goal attempt. It is for not. Metro State's offense will come back onto the field. Yeah, that you, you could just you could see it. Uh, at it's it's almost like watching a movie and you're you're watching the plot unfold and, and you and you call you call what's going to happen next and it happens. Yeah, it was he, that was just too. He easy. had the distance. He's got the leg, but like you said, that's just drifted. Yeah, oh. and that's tough to be a right-footed kicker and get a little bit of a spin on that with your hips to try to hook that back. Just a little too much, a especially when the wind is blowing at you and yeah to the left. Yep, kicker is a. Kicker, I, I did it a couple times in school. I, I fill in and kick it. But I, I, when I was in there, I thought, this is a lonely job. This is really a lonely job because all eyes are watching, and they, they want that ball, and that ball's got to go right where it needs to go. And it's on you. It's I mean, they say it's a team effort, but no. uh, it's, it's on you. Yep, it is. 
the I mean, handoff. Yeah, yeah, the big tackle. You know, every other play, you've got the you got the center to the quarterback to the either the quarterback keeps it or the quarterback pitches to a running back or he throws it to a receiver. Like there's all these other cogs that are going on. Kicker, it's you snap the ball is set and you you kick it. It's it's on you. It is. The ball carrier at that time for Metro State number 32, Devin Church. And he got a yard, so call it second and nine from the 25 for Metro State. That, that, had, that really had to hurt for UCCS not to get those points. It did. Letner, he's going to run the option to the near side, the pitch, and is running out of room and almost loses it. That was Nixon. I, I thought Letner ran out of real estate there, and it, as a quarterback, I ran the option in high school. If it's going to be that short of a pitch, you need to turn and go upfield. You, you're, you're putting your back because when you make that pitch, there's the pitch relationship. And if you're too close, you get that pitch that's going to bounce off shoulder pads or whatever. You, uh, Letner in that situation needs to cut up field. Yeah, and also not just that, but you don't have the time as a, as no. a running back to secure the ball to nope. be able to make and a play. Have vision to see where you need to go. I, exactly. You, you've got to have at least a, a, a split second to tuck the ball and move uh, upfield. And he just didn't have that opportunity. He's lucky that the uh, that the water. Uh, Mountain Lions didn't come up with that. Well said. Third and six at their own 28. Metro State's been lights out on offense. Can they move the ball again? Slant over the middle. And it's intercepted. Bobbled and intercepted. Number 17 for UCCS, Isaiah Taylor, defensive back. The ball was there to the receiver. And that was number in and out of the hands of number 19 for Metro State. He had it, Eric. It was number 19. It was Tyler Lopez that made the hit. He bobbled it, and then it gets picked off. So UCCS once again dodges a bullet. They got decent field position, but time is of the essence now. You get a lot of points. You, they found themselves in a deep hole. And the old saying is, when you find yourself in a deep hole, throw the shovel down and yell for a rope. Yeah. You know? So. Well, their defense comes up with a huge stop, a big turnover, a great field position. Uh, they've got a fresh set of downs. Still, plenty of time left in the game for them to make uh, make a fight for something. You got if you're UCCS, you have to play flawless football at this point. Absolutely, on both sides any, of the ball. Any more mistakes? You just you, you just can't. No, time's not your friend right now. So off it, the quarterback in the shotgun. He's got twins to the far side, one receiver near side, fires into the flat, got his receiver at the far side, over the 30, and he's got a first down out at about the 26-yard line. Nice 13-yard pickup. Off, it's got a quick release. Just zip. He's got a release. If they give this kid time, he's going to be a factor. Well, he's got to watch himself with the way he's throwing those routes. He's going to throw one of these balls, and someone's going to be hanging back. and Wait he's going to Waiting on him, and he's going to run it, and he's going to take it to the house. Those are some dangerous throws he's making. Yep. You got to be have field awareness. If you're Metro State and you're able to recognize that play, that, that's that's one you could take back to the house and you can make him regret Byers? throwing that ball. Oh, it was almost tip, picked off. His intended target was Alanis at around the 12, and he had to go up, leap up for that, and – Metro State was waiting in the wings, the safety right behind him, trying to scoop that ball off the turf. And you, you just said it well, Eric. You got to be careful. Know your personnel you're throwing to. There's a difference between throwing to a, a 5'9 guy and a 6'2 guy. There's a they run the same route, but the ball's, the ball's going to be placed differently. Or someone who's really good at the running their route and someone who's not. Absolutely. Makes a difference. If you know where that ball's got to be and you know that the person's going to be there, maybe you make that throw. If you're throwing the ball to someone who is a little bit lazy on their routes and cuts those corners and you know doesn't exactly do what they're supposed to, you could be punished big time for it. Yep. So smart football down here by UCCS. They're at the 13. They're well inside the red zone, and they should be licking their chops, the Mountain Lions, and looking for dinner down here. They need it quick. Oh, here Bank it is. Fires back in the end zone, and a laser strike! My quarterback off it to the back of the end zone. That ball had some zip on it. And the officials are talking, though. Dead ball foul on UCCS. Oh, that hurts. That's a killer right there. 
because that was a beautiful throw by Xander Offit. He put that ball, I mean, he, he threw that thing on a rope. He, my heart hurts for him. My heart hurts for UCCF. That, that you, just, you just cannot make those types of mistakes when you're down by 28 points. No. And, and, now, and you were in field goal range. Now you're not in field goal range. Yep, that just puts you – you know, things just – I mean, if, if, if I'm just thinking out of, the, out of the box here. If the Mountain Lions, the beginning of this game, go with Xander Offit and, and not take anything away from Cross, but they started with Offit, things could have been different in this foot, a little bit different in this football game. Yeah, you never know. You know, it's tough to say. But now they're backed up first to 25 at the 28, under three minutes in the third. Twins receivers to the far side, one receiver – to the near side, that's Wilson. He's going to fake the handoff, roll to the far side, fires at the flat. Ooh. And that's a catch that at was the 20-yard line. That was nearly blocked. But Offit showing a little bit of uh, right-handed quarterback moving to the left and throwing on the run. That's tough. And it's a great leap, but just superbly thrown ball, too, because only the receiver could catch that. The defender was on him. He yep. was right there to make a play. And the receiver still got the ball, made a catch. Rock continues to roll here late in the third quarter. Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Hope you're enjoying semi-pro football. The Colorado Football Conference, both these teams, members, Metro State and UCCS. First time they've faced each other in history. So this is kind of a fun moment. Off it. He's got motion across, a back to his left. One receiver split to each side. He's got Todd off it. He was looking for the end zone. Fires, and he was looking for number 11, Wilson. And are they going to get pass interference? Oh. No, but uh, we've got a Metro State defender clapping, so flags at the two-yard line. What is this going to be? It could be offensive is it, pass is this interference. offensive, yeah. Or is it a push? Uh, it's I think it's on Metro State. Wow, you talk about – I mean, right now, Metro State is gift-wrapping this drive. They're, they're gift-wrapping it for the Mountain Lions. At the five. Here's the problem, though. UCCS has gotten breaks. They've moved the ball and everything, but they've built so much time, This a big portion of this third quarter. They're down by a lot. So even if they score here, they've got to be thinking quicker scores in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to do a better job at moving the ball down the field uh, much faster than they are because when Metro State gets the ball back, you can bet that they're going to be running it and burning up some clock. Yep. And then once that defense comes up, they're, they're going to air it out again and, and make them pay like they have all game long. So Metro State, they dig in their heels on defense from the five. Over the middle, and the pass is knocked away. Great defense. By the Roadrunners of Metro State, the back came out of the backfield, or the, the the receiver Ashton, number 12, he had the catch, and the, and the defensive back reached in and picked it and knocked it down. That was a great heads-up play by the defense of Metro State. You can't ask for better better play than that for, from your defense. And if it's at the five-yard line, here's the thing. They went for the field goal earlier. This is this is four-down territory for getting it into the end zone. No field goals down. No, here. absolutely not. Uh, you have to go. Even if you get a penalty at this point, you gotta you got to get seven on the board. Yep. There's just not enough time to kick a field goal. Last week, these mountain lines, the UCCS, and their debut opener as a football club, they put up 57 points in Colorado Springs tonight. They've come up with seven. They're threatening, but it has been a rough go for them. Offit's going to run the quarterback draw inside. He's hit. And he drives, gets it. And he is in. Touchdown. Sander Offit, the quarterback for UCCS, crosses the goal line. And they have cut the deficit here at Shea Stadium with 2.08 left in the third quarter. All right. Now they're down by 22 points if they can get that. But a illegal block by UCCS, oh. and they're going to march it off. That is the second touchdown that's been called back. Yep. That is, boy. And I'm telling you, UCCS, Eric, their coaching staff, this team is going to watch film on this and go, why make it any harder on ourselves? They're going to be bald by the end of it, pulling their hair out. Yep. We were down by that much. We scored, and we just couldn't find a way to get back. 
It's timeout on the field. UCCS will take it. It'll be second and 20 after the touchdown's called back. George Holt and Eric Galserin live from Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. You're watching and listening to Metro State University football right here on Steve Weed Media. Stick with us. We'll be back momentarily. So we're back to action, getting set again. 2.08 left in the third quarter of play. Colorado Football Conference, semi-pro football, week two. And it's going to be second and 20. Two touchdowns on this drive called back by UCCS. They've had a tough night. Seven points is what they've got so far. Off at the quarterback. Hands off to the big guy, a bruiser. That looks like 99 in the backfield, Soren Farrell, he's six foot 245. They're going with a bruiser in the backfield. They need to, uh, but why Why do you run the ball? Like, at, at this point, you need to get it in the end zone. Oh, I agree. And now it's third down and, what, 18? Yeah. Yeah, so. You're not really fooling anybody. No, like, it, why, why, waste the, why waste the down? Yep. You need the points on the board. Throw the ball. Even if it's a, an out route and you only pick up, like, seven, eight yards, it's still better than running the ball and, and just chewing clock. Yeah, I would agree. That's what Metro State should be doing is chewing clock, not UCCS. So back to each side. Off it will throw the fade down the far sideline. And clean play. No pass interference. Fourth down. Overthrew him. And 18. So you got to come up with a touchdown play here. They've done it twice. It's their time to charm. Are they going to find a way to? But if I've got to look at UCCS so far in this football game, Eric, the, thing this, the player that stands out in my mind is Xander Offit. Yeah, he's done a phenomenal job. And unfortunately, his uh, teammates aren't, uh, aren't holding him up. He's, uh, he's Right now, I feel like Xander Offit's a one-man band. In a lot of in a sense of the word, they're gonna they're gonna go for a field goal, Eric. They got the the uh, field goal kicker out there again. They're gonna go for for a that's Camden Campbell again, the six foot seven guy. Yeah. Now we got a timeout for Metro State. Timeout. Not, not sure why Metro State was going for a burn a timeout on this play. Yeah. Want to remind you too here on Steve Weed Media, more semi pro football coming your way next Saturday, May nineteenth, two p.m. Eastern. It's on the East Coast. Steve Weed will be out there, our owner-producer, the AFE versus FFA football game. He'll be doing that game, shooting that at 2 p.m. Eastern. Check out steveweedmedia.com for that. The following week, Saturday, May 26th, two weeks from tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, it'll be Freedom Fest. That's a comedy special right here on steveweedmedia.com. Check that out as well. Okay, if I'm UCCS right now, when they come back out on the field, I have off it. Setting that ball, placing the ball. Uh, you do because you could have a fire call. You could have a trick. You want the ball in this kid's hands. That's yeah. I've seen that up here, and it, you want him having the ability to make plays. And even even if they do kick the ball, you still want someone running down the field in the event that something goes wrong, give off it the, the opportunity to throw a ball into the end zone should the kick go awry. Uh, I agree. We'll see what they do here. That's why we're up in the booth broadcasting and the coaches are coaching on the sidelines. We'll see what they come up with here. But Metro State, we knew they had a pretty solid defense after last week's performance in week one. And you and I talked about it in the postgame show. We weren't sure about, hey, where's this offense at? Because they're going to need an offense if they want to do something. And uh, boy, they, 
they showed up ready to play tonight, didn't they? Uh, absolutely, they did. And I, I think that's a testament to the, the offensive line getting the job done, uh, m keeping the, their, their men at bay, giving the quarterback the opportunity to throw the ball. I mean, he's, he's had opportunities for second, third reads. He's had opportunities for pump fakes. He's had countless opportunities to get the ball down the field because he's had all the time in the world. The field goal attempt and 0 for 2. So Camden Campbell, he won't get the field goal attempt. And once again, the Mountain Lions of UCCS come away without points. Again, that's a wasted opportunity. You're down by 28 points. You don't kick a field goal. This is like a script flip for the UCCS offense from last week to this week. And a flip script, the same thing for opposite ends 180. Metro State doesn't get it done offensively last week. They've come out tonight firing on all cylinders. UCCS puts up 57. They've got seven tonight, a tale of two different offenses. Well, not just that, but you, you've got all these opportunities. You're, you're moving the ball, uh, not superbly, but you're getting it down the field. I, I mean, the score honestly should be 21 to 35 right now um, uh, with, the, with the blown opportunities of, of touchdowns not made. Yep, two touchdowns got called back by UCCS. Or actually, it should be 24 because 24. The, yeah, the heartbreakers for the Mountain Lions, but that's why you play the game. You got to go back to the next play and find a way to get it done. Back on the field, Letner and the Roadrunner offense, and good tackle by UCCS. Lack of better, the ball carrier out to about the 21 yard line on the near side. It'll be second down, Metro State. Chew that clock. Yep, and it's under a minute to play in the third quarter. UCCS played better in the third quarter. It's improved, but not enough. They're no. not near where they need to be to build it right now. They have got to have an, an, an astounding fourth quarter performance to come back. They could do it, but again, things uh, plays got to go your way, and you've you've got to not turn the football over and not make the mental mistakes. Yeah, like UCLA did against Texas A and M. <laughs> Eric's also a UCLA football and basketball fan. He's also in separate therapy for that as well. The handoff, Letner. He's going to fire the long ball. Oh, his receiver. It was a one-on-one -on -one battle on the far sideline at the 45-yard line. Flags down. Yep, and a flag down on the near side at the 24. But, well, you talk about mano y mano on that far side. Letner just pulled the pin and let it go. He was giving his guy a, a shot at it. And he almost comes down with it. Yeah. Uh, all for naught, though. Yep. Metro State will get backed up. 12.2 seconds left in the third quarter. This game is actually moving much more smoothly than last week with the penalty bowl, I'd like to think of it. Last week, that really got out of hand last week. It was a 15-7 game, the final. But, man, with those penalties, that, that game... What time did we get out of here last week? What time did the game end? I, I don't know. 10, it was That game lasted an eternity. 10, 15. I mean, you know, I was in fear it might go to overtime. <laughs> <laughs> the game that lasted all week. Yes. And here comes the run by Metro State. Physical run, 5.3 seconds. It was second and 14. Nice run. It was a good run. That was lack of beta. I, I like this kid, man, for Metro State. He is a, to me, he's a Wes Welker, Julian Edelman guy. That's kind of what he reminds me of. Not big. He's solid, though. He's tough. He's, he's, he's durable over the middle. And you can run with him, and he's going he's gonna to dish, dish licks out and take them, too. So that's the, the style of player that he reminds me of. And guess what, folks? Three down and one to go here at Shea Stadium in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. So far, the Roadrunners are enjoying a big lead, 35-7, to over the Mountain Lions of UCCS in Colorado Springs. We'll take a quick break and bring you all the fourth quarter action. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Galsford. You're watching and listening to Metro State University football right here on Steve Weed Media and Highlands Ranch. We'll be back for fourth quarter action.
Back to Shea Stadium, getting set for fourth quarter action. Want to remind you, this is week two of Colorado football of the of the Colorado Football Cup. It's next week, week three. Metro State, these Roadrunners, they will be at the Denver Sharks, the Rocky Mountain Wildfire, at the Steel City Rage in Pueblo. The Colorado Raptors of the Springs will be at the Northern Colorado Nightmare. UCCS, they'll take on the Colorado Springs Flames at Cheyenne Mountain High School. And the Eaglewood Eagles will be at the Denver Pirates. Third and seven, Lettner fires. He overshoots, and it's picked off by UCCS. And they're going to rule it incomplete. That's the... Other quarterback, Cross, that was waiting in the wings in a safety position, scooped it up. Great effort by him because he's hoping that the official doesn't think quick enough to blow the whistle and say it's so good, just picks it up and takes off running. But that's uh, all dressed up, nowhere to go. So UCCS, the ball's not bouncing their way today. Yeah, like putting lipstick on a pig. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you you got to endure him. You just got to endure. A Saints fan, a UCLA fan, need I say more? 14.53 <laughs> left in the fourth quarter here at Shea Stadium. Having a good time, semi-pro football. It was chillier earlier, but it's gotten a lot better. And I don't know if we're going to get rain. We thought we were going to get rain. I don't want to jinx it, but it doesn't feel like that anymore. Lettner, the pooch punt. That's a swirler. Hits at the 45. And they'll be down at about the 43-yard line. So UCCS is going to have ample field position. The best field position of the day. Yep. And they've got almost a full quarter to put up some points. And it's just going to be – they're going to have to just lock and load and go for it here, strap it up and go. Yeah, uh, uh, honestly, they're going to have to score, like, on the first or second play of this drive and give it back to – Metro in order to have a shot at getting back in this. You, you've got one quarter to score 28 points. That's asking a lot. It is. Vince Lombardi, though, remember what Vince Lombardi's saying was? He said, if you go into a football game, you lead by, you know you're going to get safe to have a win if you're up by 28 going into the fourth quarter. That was a Vince, Lomb Vince Lombardi famous saying that he used to quote all the time. If you go up by four touchdowns, you're good. However, after his time, they had guys like Roger Staubach, John Elway, and Joe Montana that kind of changed the dynamics of the game. That, that 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 whole thing went out the window. So the and, quarterback and a guy named Josh Rosen that yeah out of <laughs> UCLA yes, I, I just I don't know why he had to be the one quarterback that you mentioned. There was a guy years ago that came out of UCLA that I was impressed with a guy named Troy Aikman who won three Super Bowls in four years with the Dallas Cowboys. He had one of the prettiest deep balls I've ever seen. Yes, but did he come back from thirty five points on an opponent with two minutes left in the third quarter? No, no, that's tough. I, I witnessed, you know, we talked about, we, we interviewed Mark Jackson, former uh, Bronco legendary wide receiver of the Three Amigos last week. I got to see him play. He played for years with John Elway. And I've been at Mile High Stadium in the past several times when I saw John Elway pull out fourth quarter comebacks. And you just left yourself going, huh? It was amazing to watch. And a handoff, and he'll try to get something out of it. Got to throw the ball. Uh, yeah. I mean, at this point, it's. Yeah, you're one dimensional, but you got to throw the ball. Running the ball here is kind of a non-factor at this point. Yeah, it's You're not fooling anybody. You're not. Time is not on your side. You've got to drop back at the gun and sling it. I, I mean, if, if you're going to run the ball at this point and, and you're down by 28 points. Maybe a you, draw. You after you've been throwing, after you get throwing the football down the field and getting him to back off that you can run a draw here and there. But they're back in the shotgun. Good, good quarterback for the Mountain Lions. He's going to hand off again. Oh, and he's hit and lit. At the, about the 21. Good hit by Metro State. See Just superb defense by Metro State Boy, tonight. These guys can hit and tackle. That's number 10 for Metro State. Looking for him here on the roster. We'll find that in a minute. Number 10 with the hit. Oh, number 10. That's Brandon Halperin. He's a solid blue-collar kind of guy. Good tackler. Third and two. Yeah, Metro State is uh, bend but don't break. I mean, they've let them get plenty of yards, but you look at that scoreboard and you wouldn't think it. Yep, and the fake by the – oh, he swallowed up. The play looked good. Yeah, he got the first down. Off it looked good, running up inside, and then he got shouldered. 
They dropped to the turf. Hey, but he got what he needed. He got the first down. Yep. Unfortunately, he ran the ball instead of throwing it, so the clock is chewing. Yep. Sure is. Clock closing in at 12 and a half minutes left in this football game. And the way it looks right now is that Metro State will bounce back from a tough loss. Get, they should go one and one on the season. And UCCS would go one and one as well, matching records. Off it, long ball to the far sideline. What a throw by Offit, and it's a touchdown. UCCS, great throw by Xander Offit. Pretty throw to the near side of the corner. I had to hold my breath. I was looking for a flag. Yeah, like uh, that's what if, if I'm off it too, I'm going, there's no flags, right? It's, I'm not going to celebrate until there's no flags. <laughs> but they get it. They get the touchdown. Uh, they needed it. Big time. And so the big guy will come back in, the field goal kicker, <coughs> six foot seven. He's missed two field goal attempts tonight. Hit a PAT earlier, but he's had two field goal attempts. Camden Campbell, big lanky guy, and holding is off it. Yep, they're going to fake, go for two, back in the end zone. They got it. They got the two-point conversion. Good play call, a fire call by UCCS. And it'll be 35 to 15 here at Shea Stadium with 12-15 left to go in the ballgame. That is... Good execution and a gutsy call right there. Very gutsy call. UCCS, they get a touchdown. They've, they've done very well at the trick plays tonight. Uh, it, they have, and they've had two touchdowns called back. They finally get in down here in the fourth quarter, uh, but is it going to be too little too late? I think it is. You know, if, if Metro State goes down and scores another touchdown, I would say it puts this game out of reach. Yes, yes it does. And that's, if I'm Coach Cobb, which I'm not, but if I'm Coach Cobb, this is the old coach coming out of me, I'm telling my guys on the offensive unit, go down and get another touchdown. Just get a score. Two clock, get another touchdown, and let's go ahead and put this thing away. And he don't, and guys, no, no mental mistakes on this drive. I mean, even a field goal at this the point. The offsides and the block of the bat, we don't need that stuff. Yeah. So even, even a field goal, because you got the wind at your yep, back. I agree. Clean football right here. Two guys... Back deep, one at the 20 and one at the 24 for Metro State. Campbell will kick off for the Mountain Lions from the 35. Line drive. And, oh, what a great kick. It went all the way down to the one-yard line, and he had no choice but to run it. And he's going to get tripped up at the five-yard line. So great kick by Camden Campbell for UCCS. And the ball went all the way down inside the one. Metro State had no choice but to try to pick it up, scoop it, and return it. And they get dropped at the five-yard line. So the Mountain Lions are bringing the claws out. You're right. But where did that ball hit first? Yep. That, uh, another, uh, they should have fielded the ball when they had the opportunity, when it was at the 20, instead of letting it bounce all the way down the field, down to the one. Yep. And when you've got the two deep guys – on kickoff, they need to be talking to each other back. Yeah. Mine and yours. We used to have mine and yours yeah. back there. Catch the ball, fair mine, catch. Mine, 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 or yours, yours, yours back there. Yeah. And make sure you get, get you clear, get out of the way, and let him get it. There was a miscommunication, and now Letner and company, they are got their backs to the goal line. They've got a big lead, but. A lot of real estate to yep, make. To cover. And this Nixon, or is it Willis? I want to say maybe Willis number six. Hard to see from this vantage point in the booth there on the far side. Number six. Yep, it's number six with the ball carrier. And that's Ernest Nixon. The third. I'm going to get that third in there. Ernest Nixon, the third. Nifty Nixon. He picks up one. It'll be second and nine from the six. Letner. They got to be thinking, keep moving the chains. Oh, absolutely. And. Uh, honestly, you need a couple first downs. Even if you don't score, you got to get a couple first downs to give yourself some decent field position if you do end up having to kick. So they've got to pick up at least a couple first downs yep. so that they don't put uh, UCCS right back where they want to be. Letner's going to throw the interception, and it's picked off at the 35-yard line by UCCS, and that's number 12, Elijah Ashton, the defensive back. Letner stepped up in the pocket. I don't think he saw him. No. Loaded up, threw it to the near sideline to his receiver, and he underthrew it. 
and Ashton was waiting on it. Picks it off, but there's a flag. A couple. There's a flag in the end zone. What do you want to bet? It's roughing the passer. If it's roughing the passer, that is another bad break for UCCS. But Metro, it is great call. Eric Alstrom with the eagle eye up here, and that's that's a killer. That's a killer. That just negates your interception. You've got great field position, and because someone's frustrated, he lays a wood unnecessarily. Goes goes for the jaw, whatever. Yep, headshot. Can't do that. That's why, as the passing game has evolved in the game of football, people there's a, it's a double edged sword because the more you throw the football, the more the officials look for guys taking pot shots at the quarterback. Yep. The lender. And, and the more you want to protect that quarterback because he's the general on the field. Yep. He's going to hand off. He'll get a couple out of it, but UCCS thought they had a big break on that interception down there. All for not. Yep, good play by Ashton, but somebody got a little too rough with the quarterback. And you have to think about it from a standpoint of the game of football, how it's evolved with the passing game. Some people get upset and say, oh, well, they've got a helmet shoulder pads like everybody else. True. However, the ball's in their hands every play. So they are a target. They're a bullseye on every play. Every if you don't have play. good quarterbacks, the quality of games isn't the same. No, not at all. And if you're not protecting that investment, then you're degrading your product. Absolutely. Letner, he's rolling to the near side, fires at the flat, got his receiver. He threw that ball. Head ball had some zip on it. Letner hits his target. The near sideline. Well, two toes drag. Down. Two toes dragging right out of bounds. That was a superbly thrown ball. Yep. And that was number 81, Gugan. R Ramon Gugan, near sideline. Letner was rolling to the near side and just let her rip. I tell you, I, I like him when he's rolling out. I, he's I don't like very him effective. in I the agree. pocket. In the pocket, he, Not I as think much. he's got too, too much. Uh, there's too much going on around him. When he's able to roll out, he's able to see the field. He's a better and he's quarterback. A much better quarterback. He's able to see the field, and he's able to make much better throws when he uh, can see what's going on and not hiding behind a line of people that are yep. impeding his sight. And the running back will go. That's Lacavetta. Lacavetta's not a big guy, but you watch him put his shoulder down. He is extremely tough. He's a gritty football player. He's lanky. But he, he, when you see him go one on one, oh, he's gritty. He he gives up 20, 25 pounds, and he's the guy standing at the end of the play. I, I like this kid a lot. Yeah. When you go back to Letner, the quarterback. He could be he could be, un, he could be fifty pounds less than the person he's going up against, and he's going to win. He's he he runs the ball with an attitude. Absolutely, he does. And Letner, you know when you talked about him rolling out, he reminds me of a guy that years ago played for Boston College named Doug Flutie. Yeah. He plays like a he's a Doug Flutie kind of kid. That's how he plays. If some of you that are watching this can even remember, you pull him up on YouTube, Doug Flutie, that famous pass against Miami. He'll be, uh, forever be known for that. Second and five at the 39. The toss to the far side. He's going to cut it back inside. Oh, and nice he's for play. Daylight and a great run, and he'll get a first down. Six. Wow. Good run. And I want to say, is that that's number? that is number five for... Metro State, good pickup. That's Aaron Knox, 50 Knox. Nice, nice run again. He he loves to stop and start. He's a stop and start. He's a brakes guy. I would hit the brakes, make, make you over miss. pursue, and then go back. Yep, uh, he made two defenders miss him. Yep, He's before he got gang tackled. He is shifty. Six yards past the the first down. Yep, Letner, the option near side. He'll get it out to Dixon. He's going to cut back across. He's got green. He's got real estate. He needs a couple of blocks, and he is cutting back inside, and he is all the way down to about the 33-yard line. Another first down by Metro State. Clock continues to move. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, that clock is a huge, huge factor now. All that time that UCCS wasted with those run plays, all the time that they wasted with uh, missed opportunities, now it's going to come back to haunt them. Yep. So Knox... He, he, this, he is a slasher. He's a slasher. He's the kind of guy that when you run the football, he's fun to watch. He's really fun to watch. He, run, he runs with instinct and heart. 
Here we go. Sanders. Yep. I mean, Barry, oh, yeah, Barry Sanders kind of. That's a big compliment. 34-yard line, first and 10. Out of the shotgun, letting her one back behind him. Twins receivers to both sides. He's going to run the draw right through the middle, and he's going to try to get to the outside. Another first down and for Metro still State. On his feet. Still on his feet out of the 14-yard line. And I want to say it's number 25 that time, a different ball carrier. That's Danielle Silva. Daniel Silva. So well, the offensive just, line getting it done. Yeah, they're, they're just lining them up and knocking them down at this point. I think UCCS has pretty much lost heart at, at, at this stage. Well, you look at it right now for Metro State, the analogy is bowling pins. They're getting to the guy in front of him to bowling pin, knock him down, you got a bowling ball right behind you. And we're under halfway to go on the fourth quarter. So that And the defense is loving it for Metro. Oh, yeah, because they're they, getting all the rest in the world. They're just sitting there getting water, getting rest. Hey, guys, keep driving. They're you know, cheering them on. So here we go from the 15. They're inside the red zone, knocking at the door again. Metro State. Lettner out of the gun. Twins to the far side, one receiver to the near side. He's going to fake to the far side, looking for help. Fires in the flat and fires it away from traffic. Good play by Lettner that time. He's not going to give the football up down here. And like you said, even if they don't come away with seven and they get three, that's still points, and that's still another mountain to climb. Yep, just puts it that much more out of reach. And now, look, the wind. It's, the wind has died down. Yep. They're in field goal range even right now. A and they've already chewed enough clock. It's you know, under seven minutes at this point. It would take a miracle at this point for UCCS to, get to, to w pull out a win here. I would agree. They do happen. Don't get me, don't get us wrong. But and is there there is a timeout on the field? The mount lines. The UCCS. They'll take a timeout. The ball's on the 15 yard line. Metro State threatening again. If they get a touchdown down here, that could be the nail in the coffin tonight. 6:51 left in this contest at Highlands Ranch Shea Stadium. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Galsrin. You're watching and listening to Metro State University football at the Colorado Football Conference live right here on Steve Weed Media. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Back to action here at Shea Stadium. Second and 10 for Metro State. Fires, screen to the near side, looking for help. He's gonna get, oh no, he finds a way to get away at the 10, five, dives, yeah. touchdown! <laughs> Metro State with the leap into the end zone. Four people miss. Number 81, wow, good God, Ramon Gagan, what a play. He made everybody miss, he had three tacklers right in front of him, gets away from all three, Gets to the two, does a somersault over the pylon into the end zone, and basically says to UCCS on the defensive side, take that. Wow. Do you think they might have a little chip on their shoulder in this game? That is an athletic effort by Ramon Gagan. And I hope I'm saying his name properly. It doesn't matter. He's number 81, and he just made a heck of a play for a score. And I think... I'll tell you what, that's going to be on a highlight reel. Man, is, he's going to be excited watching film with his coaching staff going, that's called talent, coach. I just want to, you know, you can yell at me in practice, but. Or if he's trying to get into the NFL to the next level, that's. And when a guy goes diving down near the goal line like that, that takes a lot of courage. <laughs> Through and true. And guess what? Stick a the Roadrunners of Metro State, they lead now 42 to 15. Over the mountain lines at UCCS in Colorado Springs. George Holden, Eric Galsford, stick with us. We'll be right back. 
for the kickoff here from Shea Stadium. We're having a lot of fun, semi-pro football in Northern Colorado. You're watching and listening to Steve Weed Media. Back to Shea Stadium. Beautiful, breezy evening in northern Colorado. We're in Highlands Ranch. Semi-pro football in northern Colorado. Metro State football. Talk about redemption after last week. They only put up seven points all last week. They put up 42 tonight. Big turnaround for the Roadrunners. Short kick by Metro State. Hits at the 35. And it goes past 10 yards. So does that mean, do, would Metro State get the ball here? I, be I believe, yeah, Lettner and company, they're going to get the football. It went past 10 yards, and Metro State's going to get the football back. Or are they going to re-kick it? They got excited. That was... Premature, I guess. Yeah, they're going to re-kick it. <laughs> that hurts. Metro State was like, hey, let's just do this again. But UCCS, um, Eric, they've, you know, after putting up over 50 last weekend in a week's time, they, they ran into a buzzsaw tonight. Oh, they did. And this is exactly what Metro State needed. I agree. Offensively, that defense – you know, you'd have to be on the defensive side all week talking to the guys been on offense. Guys, we, we can stop them. We just need you guys to score points. Don't, don't worry about us stopping people. We just need you guys to know that you can go out and play loose. Do, do, play your game. Do what you guys got to do. And whatever happened this week made a massive difference in this football yeah, team. Go out and have fun. You know, honestly, I, I think it goes back to the offensive and defensive lines. Yeah. And I don't know that it was a matter of the Pirates having that good of a line. Or if they were... The Pirates were physical, I thought. They were very physical, a lot more so than UCCS but has been tonight. Also true. Very undisciplined. Short kick. UCCS will get it at the 39. And one of the big guys, he's still on his feet. Running, and it's a free ball. Did Metro State get the fumble? It's Metro State football. They get the fumble. And it was number 53, Robert Gordon, one of the offensive linemen, that picked it up on the short kick, went running. Here's the thing, though, Eric. If you're on kick return team and you're one of the one of the big guys, you're not used to getting the football. That makes a difference down there because you get in traffic. You don't know how to protect it. Well, not just that, but you're trying to go for the extra yards, try to do that little bit of extra Everything. effort. You know, you're giving it your all. You're trying to stay on your feet, trying to move and go forward, get some more yards. And that last ditch effort, it it, it makes or breaks you. Yep. So another turnover. UCCS had a short kick, but Metro State knocks, jars the ball free on one of the up men for the Mountain Lions. And Metro State's back in business offensively. So the defense is like, we kind of like this. This is different from last week. They were on the field a lot last week, and they've been rewarded this week. They have indeed, and that also goes to play with their special teams too because Good point. a lot of those defensive guys are also on special teams. I haven't been on the field a whole lot. Uh, they're getting plenty, uh, plenty of opportunity to rest. They're wow. A flag, illegal substitution on UCCS. Another five yards, and it just gets it gets worse for the Mountain Lions. Start off with a big win at home. They go on their first road game, and um, things didn't go as planned. Right? <laughs> not, not even a little bit. But uh, some great quarterback play. Ab I like this Offit kid, this Xander Offit kid. He is impressive. I like the way he throws the ball. I like his. He's got poise and composure. If he can just get the rest of the team um, to fix the mental errors that they uh, are having this week, which they didn't have last week, uh, you should be able to take care of things. I, I think that 
maybe they let their guard down a little bit after they played the... Uh, and Lacafetta to the 35, 30, cuts back inside, still on his feet, to the 15, down to the 10-yard line. Lacafetta. Wow. And I'm, I'm going to give him a nickname. He's Lookout Lacavetta. This kid... Look out of Etta? Look, look, look out Lacavetta. This kid is the real deal. He should have been tackled on that screenplay. You should 30. call him Corvetta. Corvette, yeah. Yeah, every nickname you could come up with. He's just, he is really tough to tackle. He's very difficult to tackle. He's elusive. He's scrappy. He's very scrappy. It's like for him to get tackled one on one, it's personal. He takes it very, it's, it's almost like one or two guys aren't taking me down. It's going to be three or four of you that are going to take me down. But all the way down to the 10 yard line. Threatening and knocking on the door again, Metro State. This, they have put up some big numbers offensively tonight. Everything's working. Fire splat. He is wide open. Cuts back inside into the end zone. Touchdown, Metro State again. About and Lettner, the quarterback, is letting it loose tonight. Wow. Another touchdown pass. And you know he's he's got to feel great about how this game has gone versus last week. A lot a lot of growth, a lot of progress, a lot to just say, hey, see, we can do it. Yep. And you look at quarterbacks. A lot of times when you have a bad game, it's psychological. The next week, you got the talent, but it's almost a sense of, hey, I I played like garbage last week. You got to look at yourself in the mirror and go, I have to improve. There's got to be I've got to play better than that. This kid went and did some soul searching. He, I don't know what some of the things that you do, but he came out and said, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to turn it loose and just play my game tonight. And it paid off. Well, it's it's not just him. The offensive line is showed up, showed up big time. tonight. That's, just, that's the story of the game to me tonight. The biggest change for this Roadrunner football team in one week was the offensive line play tonight. Last week, it really they they were gelling. They I mean, you looked at the uh, qu quarterback, Lettner, he was under fire, under pressure. Oh, a lot. every play. He couldn't get off. He's gotten good looks tonight. They've rolled him. They've done boots with him. When he does drop back, he's got time. He's hitting his, his receivers, and his guys are catching the football. And that, that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the Pirates just, I, I mean, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, they shipwrecked him. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. just uh, And they shipwrecked themselves to – with the constant penalty, that could. The, the, if you look at the Denver Pirates as the season moves on, we'll kind of keep track of what they're doing. But if they get rid of the penalties, that's a decent football team. They're going to be dangerous. That's a very good. They they, just they clean up the the mistakes and the mental errors. They're a really dangerous team. They've got talent. But they've got a good defense. They've got a really good offense. Clean up the mistakes. They're going to be. Uh, they should be uh, a really good team I if agree. they can uh, clean up the mistakes. So the. Extra point attempt by Metro State. Letner, oh, it's going to be a fake. Letner fires into the end zone, picked off in the end zone, but it won't matter. He'll get its cross. Won't matter. No. But the score will stand right now, 48 to 15. Metro State, they are absolutely pouring it on on UCCS in this football game with 5:37 left to go yeah. in this game. Uh, barring a miracle. That's stick a fork in UCCS tonight. They're done. Yep. Let's go over again really quick here. Let you know about Steve Weed Media. Check out steveweedmedia.com. If you've got a business, you, you have a company, you want to do an infomercial, commercial, anything with video production, anything like that, you want to get that done at a good rate, call and get a hold of Steve Weed Media. Check out the contact information at steveweedmedia.com. Upcoming events. Next Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, Steve is going to be on the East Coast for the AFE versus FFA All-Star football game. Check that out. And then the following Saturday, two weeks from tonight, at 7 p.m. Eastern, May 26th, Freedom Fest, right here on steveweedmedia.com. That's a comedy festival. You want to check that out as well. It's not just all about football. you got to have a laugh, too. So, so check out uh, Freedom Fest on May 26th here on steveweedmedia.com. So UCCS is going, sometimes as a football team, you got to ask yourself, is it over? You know, <laughs> is it, is it over? You know, sometimes it's just not your night, and it's rough. It's a rough go. Well, the score says it's over. Yep, a squib kick 
Right over the 10, and Metro State, they, they've got it. That went 10 yards. That should be Metro State football. UCCS didn't even really. They didn't even try. They didn't swarm to the football area. No. It was almost like, okay, it's done. And Metro State goes for the goes for the onside kick. That is said in a statement right there. And I'm, I'm betting you, between these players, like on Facebook and Twitter, and that kind of stuff, there's, there's a lot oh, of trash there's talking be, going there's on. There's going to be a lot of John after this game for sure. And I'm sure there was a lot beforehand. That's what I'm saying this week. After yeah. UCCS might have seen what happened with the Pirates of Metro, they put up 57 points going, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. We're going to kill you guys. You know, and that's why – I'm glad when I was playing, well, I was playing, they didn't have actually social media. That dates me. But <laughs> that's why I didn't want to get into a lot of the trash talk into the you week You probably would have lost a lot of games. <laughs> I just didn't want to risk it. And I didn't want to, you know, you don't want to make a pass rusher that's 295 and super tack quick. No, you, you want to get inside their off. head. You don't want to get them mad. You want to get in their head and get them off their game. I don't want to give him any more reason to, to run, hate me, you. run me down. Yeah, no more reason. Letner, he'll hand off to his back. That's number five. I want to say that is Aaron Knox. Knox and Nixon. And They're a noxious mix for uh, the Yeah, well, as the season UCCS. goes, we're going to get some pretty good nicknames going. We want to give a shout-out to our owner, producer, Steve Weed Media, for having us to do these games and hopefully doing more in the future. It's very enjoyable. And... I want to remind you, this is week two. We'll go over some of the games for next week that will be going on in the Colorado Football Conference as well. Letner, he'll hand to, uh oh, loses it. And UCCS is going to get on top of it. That yeah. is number 30, Kevin Eves, comes it up is, with the fumble. That is UCCS's ball. You got to secure that ball. That's just uh, lack of focus on something. Oh, it like was. That. He was trying to make, he was trying to get upfield before he secured that ball. That's all that was. So. If you look at UCCS, really, you're going to have to come out here, get the shotgun, and go to work. Yeah. I mean, make, if you're UCCS right now in that huddle, you're thinking to yourself, make the score respectable. Yeah, play for pride. Yep. Uh, and that, uh, essentially, that's what it's going to come down to at this point in the game. Uh, you're not going to come out with the win tonight, but you could at least put a, you know another score or two up on the board and you know say, hey, at least we didn't quit. Yep. Or, and, and, you know, when you look at film next week, how did we improve at the end of the football game? Did, did we quit? Did we give up? Those kind of things come into, come into play and are always a factor. So he'll go under center, Xander Offit. He's got trips receivers on the far side, one running back right behind him. Screen, far side. It's behind the line. And, yep, he's going to lose yards on that now. He's lucky that thing skipped on the turf out of bounds. That stays in bounds. That's a live ball. Yeah, and that's going back to the house. Yeah. He's very lucky that that didn't get picked up and run back. So Metro State knows their duties and assignments. In a situation, you're up 48 to 15. Defensive backs know this could be the time that I get a possibly a pick six. Mm-hmm. And if you're an off a defensive lineman, this is – Prime opportunity for sacks. Yeah, pride only gets you so far when the score looks the way that it does. A and at this point, you're playing w with heart, and your heart's only going to get you so far. If yep. So emotionally, Metro's these guys are m checked out. I think if you look at some of the scores last year with Metro State in this game tonight, they've improved. With the these first two games of the season, they have improved from last season. Oh, absolutely. The pitch, the option, the quick pitch, the backfield, and he's going to skip around Eves and nope. And he's going to get swallowed up at about the 39-yard line. And they run the ball. Yep. They don't even want to throw it anymore. Well, and, that, and, and why? They, they haven't been getting picked. Yeah. It's I, I mean, uh, Metro State's the one that's throwing the interceptions, not the, not the Mountain Lions. Like, the you throw the ball down the field. The thing like with Metro State is, if you look at their offense, they turn the ball over. They have one of those defenses that shakes it off. They don't really they, – they just get on the – put back the helmet on, strap it up, get back on the field, hit somebody. That's yep. what they're – that's what they're thinking. Yep. But, and I mean, you with the mountain lines, like, why are you running the ball? You guys need to be throwing it. Off it. Launches deep. Got a guy right through. That was a decent throw by off it. And you know what? Had that receiver not broken his stride and, it. and just kept running, yep. he would have caught the ball. Xavier Wilson for UCCS. 
this Offit kid, you just saw him sling that ball. He was flat-footed and hooked that ball that, that far. He's, he's a good one. He's a keeper. A lot, of, a lot of surprising talent coming out of UCCS for a club team. Uh, I, I agree. And it's their first season. This is their second game. Yeah. You know, and sometimes you come out of the, you know, they, got, they, they get the first win. They're going to go one and one on the season. But you get the first win, you, you great out of the gate, but not, you know what I mean? Yeah, you but gotta, you got to keep building and keep growing every week. And it, each opponent poses something new. Oh, absolutely. Every week. You're tested in different ways. Yep. And uh, I guarantee you their next opponents are going to be watching film on what to do and how to stop these guys. Almost oh, an interception flag. and a flag. Are they going to get pass interference? I, I, I'm thinking so. Yeah. Yep. And that's exactly what it is. 311 left in this football game. Yep. It's the defensive penalty, so they'll mark it off. UCCS is. Yeah, can, can I, I want to see him score another this? touchdown. I, I want to see Offit score another touchdown. I just was looking he, at he this. Um, it. I mean, he's he's done a phenomenal job tonight. Did you notice that UCCS on their roster number fifty's name is Junior Seau? <laughs> That's awesome. What a linebacker he was! Revolutionized the game. The handoff. UCCS Eves through the middle, and that's a. Painful run. He gets a few out of it, but he gets snap, crackle, popped through there. You know, if you look back at when I was growing up, even all the years I've watched football, there are three linebackers that I watched in my time that changed the game of football. And those three linebackers are Lawrence Taylor, LT. Junior Seau, mm -hmm. and Ray Lewis. Those oh, three yeah. guys changed the game. They came in at a time when they brought a different style to the game. Ray Lewis combined both of those guys. Yeah. Had the speed, but he could hit. Lawrence Taylor was a guy. It didn't matter if you put two and three people on him; he could get around everybody. Well, not uh, and and go through them. Yes, Junior Seau to me was one of the greatest linebackers I ever saw. Eric play sideline to sideline. Oh yeah, he was shifty, and he never stopped chasing the play. No, never. never. He never quit. Ever. The pass fires over the middle. It's a shot. He gets it, and that's Wilson breaks a couple of tackles, and he'll be lassoed, wrapped up. All right, whistle blew. Let him go. 35-yard line, a little bit of extra curricular activity after the whistles are going off. Yeah, there's, there's some love going on down there, a lot of hugging. Oh, yeah, I call it hugging. Love taps, yeah. And uh, off it with another nice-looking sharp pass. Oh, and we got a flag. Yep, 208 left in the football game. Want to remind you, next week's games, these Metro State Roadrunners, they'll be at the Denver Sharks. The Rocky Mountain Wildfire will be at the Steel City Rage in Pueblo. That'll be at Pueblo West Cyclone Stadium. The Colorado Raptors of the Springs will be at the Northern Colorado Nightmare in Greeley. These UCCS Mountain Lions will be at the Colorado Springs Flames at Cheyenne Mountain High School. And the Inglewood Eagles, they'll be playing at the Denver Pirates. Oh, this is just bad. The wheels are just coming off. Back-to-back -back penalties. You, you get Sometimes when it rains, it pours. Oh. And it just, you know, no matter what you do. And uh, and it not even in between plays. It's literally the same play, back-to-back -back penalties. Yeah, well said. That's true. So I, UCCS I mean, is... You got 50 yards now to go before you get a first down? Uh, it's called, we, we, in, in football circles, we call that first and forever. <laughs> you know? UCCS, they're a young team. It's a brand-new team. This is their second game. But, again, going back to that, Metro State, um, they had a tough year last year. Um, they had some talented players, didn't have a lot of guys this year. They've got more bodies. But they are a much-improved football team and making games competitive, and they're going to get a big win here tonight against the only other college club football team in the Colorado Football Conference. So they'll have bragging rights this year. Yeah. You know – if uh, UCCS is able to stick with this and, oh, uh, they're getting a little chippy. I think the ref is calling Amanda like, hey, you guys need to settle it down. You know, here's my point. Here, to add to that, piggyback on that, what, why wasn't that done last week at that, with that Pirates game here? Yeah. When as much as the uh, um, unnecessary roughness. Of the cheap the shots. shots. I would have thought that the, the officials would have done that last week. Absolutely. And said, guys, we're going to call this game right now if this doesn't stop. You know, they have the right to do that. Yes, and they should have la uh, last week. 
Because that's what that's when people get hurt with like fluke injuries. Yeah, I mean, you had one person ejected out of the game. Honestly, it should have been like three or four. I agree with that. At least. So the officials give a stern warning to both clubs and say, guys, this thing's almost over. Let's play aggressive but play clean. Okay, so now you're wasting opportunity right now. You had the opportunity for your play. Now it's a two-minute warning. You could have got a playoff and a free timeout wasted. Yep. On that note, two-minute warning here at Shea Stadium at Highlands Ranch. Metro stayed on defense but in firm control of this football game. They lead 48-15 to 15 over the Mountain Lions at UCCS. I'm George Holden. He's Eric Galsrin. You're watching and listening to Metro State Football right here on Steve Weed Media. Stick with us for the final two minutes of this football game of the Colorado Football Conference. Back here at Shea Stadium, the final two minutes of this football game in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. George Holden and Eric Galsrin. It's been a good one. Metro State revives themselves over a tough loss last weekend to the Pirates. They're going to get a big win and a big boost for this season here tonight at home against UCCS. Off it fires. That's a dirt ball to the near side. That was low. That was intended for Elijah Ashton. Stops the clock at 157. Boy, he's tired. Well, yeah. You start, especially when you're losing, you've been hit, dropped to the turf. You keep throwing it. It puts mileage on you. It wears on you after a while. Yeah, that's that's two, th that's two perfectly, or two throws he should have made. Um, all nearly back to back that he's had the opportunity to progress and not so much. So UCCS will go with twins receivers to the near side. A back right next to Offit to his left, and one receiver, Mano Imano, on the far side. Shotgun formation again. A whistle, yellow on green. False start, Mountain Lions. They'll back him up five. So you said it earlier, Eric. Wheels coming off. The Mountain Lions, um, they're going back into hibernation right now. They've had some opportunities tonight, but I really thought – that first drive of this football game by Metro, marching and running the ball right down their throat, punching into the end zone, set the tone for this football game. Oh, absolutely it did. And uh, UCCS just has not had an answer. Uh, they, they've moved the ball well, but they've just not capitalized on points. I mean, it's You've got to finish drives, and they weren't able to do. do that tonight. You've got to finish drives. You've got to put points on the board. And no matter how much yardage you get out of this game, it's all for naught if there's no points to – to show for it. I agree. I think that was Eves, number 30 on the carry. He gets, gets a good chunk of yardage off to the right side of that offensive line, but again, too little, too late. Yeah, third He's down and 100 yards to go. Right. <laughs> third down and a bunch. Hand off. Yeah, they're going to hand off, and Eves will get dropped at the 49-yard line. Clock will s continue to run. And UCCS... They could even go for it on fourth down or punt either way. Well, they're just running the clock out at this point. They got under a minute or just over a minute left to go. They're running the ball just for the sake of killing clock at this point. Yep. They just want it to be over. So off it, the bright spot in my mind, the the bright spot for UCCS here tonight. Yes. This is a kid that you could grow with. For good, sure. uh, good quarterback, good receiving core. Yep. Um, off it fires. Far sideline, got a man. Great coverage by Metro State. No interference. That's how you cover on defense. He was stride for stride, right in his hip pocket. That was not going to be a completed pass. Great job by the secondary of Metro State. So the clock will stop, 47.2 seconds. Probably As need to take a knee or so. And yeah. 
call it get to what's called victory formation. That's always that was always a fun one to get in the huddle with your guys, knowing you want to get. You know how that formation. originated, victory formation? No. <laughs> uh, I, for the life of me, I can't remember the team now because it just clearly went out of my head. But uh, they they had uh, the uh, uh, NFL. Uh, one of the teams is up, and they uh, instead of taking a knee to end the game and run the clock out, they uh, they hiked the ball to run a play. Uh, quarterback ended up fumbling the ball. Other team gets the ball. I want to say the Browns were involved, if I'm not mistaken. I, I could be wrong. I wouldn't doubt it. A anyway, uh, no, the, I think they're the ones that came up with it uh, and then um, ended up winning the game um, when the other team should have won it. Gotcha. So that's why they came up with it. Just play it safe. Yes. Take a knee. So, Victor, you just you learned a little bit about football trivia and history with Eric Gausford here tonight. <laughs> it would have been a lot better if I could have remembered the At team. Shea Stadium. I'm just going to say this, though. If it involved the Browns, it wouldn't surprise me. They have been on the bad end of I don't know how much. No, I think they were on the, the winning the side winning. of that. Well, let's take it back. The 50s and 60s, the and Browns. And that's how long ago it was. It they was had a good football team. And then they got into the 70s. And, it, you know. Since then, not so much. Well, they got into it. I'm excited for this year, though. They've got a mess of talent on that team. They do, but uh, talent's only, you know, it, 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 you've got to have a staff that knows how to put that together and make it work. Well, they've hired some good coaches. Uh, they've got the good management in there now, so we'll see what happens. See if the Browns can make the – last time they made the playoffs, they had a quarterback named Bernie Kosar. That was a long time ago. And, folks, this thing is going to tick down. And week two, game two of the Colorado Football Conference season for the Metro State Roadrunners is officially in the books, their first win of the 2018 season. And they do it in big-time fashion, 48-15 to 15 over the mountain lines at UCCS in Colorado Springs. George Holden along with Eric Gausserin. And big shout out to Metro State Coach Cobb and his bunch for a great win tonight. Hey, same score for the opposing team. T a tale of, uh, of two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. The Denver Pirates won here last week in a, a, a tough one. Pretty much I call an ugly football game, 15-7. These Roadrunners are only able to put up seven points in week one. They come out in week two and they are firing on all cylinders. They put up... 48 points against UCCS. They go one and one on the season. The Mountain Lions at UCCS, they will go to one and one on the season as well. And as we want to go back over with you, I want to remind you, Colorado Football Conference, once again, these Metro State Roadrunners, they'll be at the Denver Sharks next week, week three. That's next Saturday. The Rocky Mountain Wildfire will be at the Steel City Rage in Pueblo. The Raptors of Colorado Springs will be at the Northern Colorado Nightmare. The Mountain Lions of UCCS will be at the Colorado Springs Flames. They'll be at Cheyenne Mountain High School. And the Inglewood Eagles will be at the Denver Pirates. And once again here on Steve Weed Media, keep it abreast of other semi-pro football information next Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern. Steve Weed Media, our boss and producer, he will be on the East Coast to film the AFE versus FFA All-Star Game semi-pro. Check that out. And two weeks from tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, if you like comedy, Freedom Fest will take place on May 26th. That's 7 p.m. Eastern right here on steveweedmedia.com. Once again, if you've got a company, a business, you need infomercials, commercials, anything with video production, the guru, Steve Weed, he can take care of you. Check him out, his contact information at steveweedmedia.com as both teams get together at midfield for a prayer here at Highlands Ranch, Colorado. That's kind of a nice thing to see. Yeah, that's a good finish. Uh, a lot better than what we saw last week. I would agree. A little bit more on friendly terms that, hey, when we step onto this field, we are enemies. When we when the game is over, we go back to being who we are. We're normal, everyday guys. Go to our jobs, our families, so on and so forth. Well, basically, you look at this game as we do the post-game wrap here at Chase Stadium at Highlands Ranch. Uh, Eric, I look at a Metro State defense, more of the same from yep, last week. more of the same. But the, sto the story for me was, was big time with the offensive line of Metro State enabling the run game and the pass game and having a balanced offense and able to put up 48 points today. Yeah, uh, they've had some uh, mistakes that they obviously will need to clean up, but, I mean, they they did a phenomenal job with moving the ball, getting it down the field. Uh, they've had some great trick plays that worked out for them. Actually, both teams had some great trick plays that worked out for them tonight. Um, it'll be uh, great to see uh, what happens next week with the uh, UCCS and how they respond to a loss. And then uh, also how uh, f we uh, here at Metro State um, go after a victory, see uh, how we can keep this momentum going. All right, and that's going to do it for us here tonight at Ingle, at, I'm sorry, at Highlands Ranch. The next time we'll be here at Shea State, it will be week six. And these Metro State Roadrunners, they will host the Rocky Mountain Wildfire. That'll be on June 9th. Mark your calendars, June 9th, 7 p.m. 
pregame show roughly 6.50. Check out the archives if you like watching football here at Steve Weed Media for this game tonight. The first two games of the season, check them out. The archives at steveweedmedia.com. Let us know what you think. So that's going to do it for us here at Highlands Ranch, Colorado on a chilly night. Congratulations to Metro State, 48-15 to 15 over the Mountain Lions of UCCS. So for my partner, Eric Gausserin, for our owner, producer, Steve Weed of Steve Weed Media, and saying good night for everybody here at Highlands Ranch, Colorado, and Shea Stadium. Have a fun and safe weekend. We'll see you Saturday, June 9th.